right, folks. How y'all doing tonight? Welcome to Paranormal Roundtable. Can you hear me? Is my sound okay? I don't have anybody helping me right now. I think I got it. Got so slammed with work, dude. We are just... Let me tell you something. There is a problem here in this town. And although it does, you know, give you work to do, it creates a lot of issues. The issues are that we are inundated with homeless people. And I don't know how they get through guards and cameras and still manage to vandalize and steal, but they do. They do it. How they managed to get through cameras, didn't see them. The guards didn't see them. I don't know. And they still managed to commit crimes. I mean, they have a dedication to committing crimes. It's unbelievable. So... We are absolutely slammed with with uh, work right now. This this it's just straight up the homeless people, and these are not like you know homeless people. A lot of them are able bodied males. You would not. It's not like you know homeless people like oh they're down on their luck. You know I, I got evicted and you know I'm going to be temporarily homeless. No, these people are committed to being homeless. They build camps behind all of our construction sites. They have camps. And they go through the properties and they scavenge for, for things and they steal. And they van- and they and then what they don't say, they vandalize. Because they get mad at the guards for constantly repelling them. So they turn to vandalism. We had one site where they actually took a slingshot and knocked out all the windows of the back building. Well, that was a few years ago. But it was like, that's a dedication. Like they are dedicated to being. And, you know, one day I had a talk with one of them. I was working at this one site in South Austin, and this is a, just going to lead into a story. And um, he came onto my property. <clears throat> this was about, uh, let's see, it was 2014. So it would have been eight years ago. Um, 15, two, 2015 would have been eight years ago. So he comes onto my property, and uh, he's like, you know, this property is haunted. Had no inkling of anything being haunted, had no, did not see anything, had not heard anything, had worked there for a solid two weeks and and said that it was haunted. And I said, really? I said, the only thing I see haunting it is you and your friends. You keep coming on to the prior, keep running you off, and my guards keep running you off. He said, oh, yeah, man, this place is haunted, man. It really is. And I said, well, like I said, the only thing I've seen so far is you. Never, I never saw anything at that property. I worked it multiple times. I started the account, but I did, I did, did it f- come to find out there was some weird stuff there. A couple of my guards actually did experience something really weird there. Now I'll tell you a story. The, I, I can't really say it was haunted because we don't know for sure, but we had some weird stuff. We had a guard that claimed that somebody walked onto the property, and when they turned to look, all they saw was like the upper body of this person go around the corner by some privacy fence and go into like a trail. That's all they saw. And so that guard, um, I think his name was Doug. Wasn't that Doug? Doug? Oh, yeah, yeah. Doug, oh, yeah, I remember Doug. Doug said that. I think it was Doug. But, and, and he was one of those people that was a skeptic. He didn't believe in anything. But he had seen something at, at uh, I think it was Garden Ridge. We were doing Garden Ridge. He saw something, which is... Right there where the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house used to be. Yeah. And he claims to have seen something there. But up to that point, he's like, I started working for you guys. I started seeing things. And there was something. Of course, you'd never worked security. I said, well, maybe because you never worked security. And so, anyway, there was a story that was given to us. And I and I went through my emails and I found this one. I thought it was, oh, look at that. What is this little bug? Huh. What is that? He's green kind of cold to be out here hey buddy that's got to be the same one because he's he, he's been what spending he, some time in what here what is he eating what is he what is he doing i don't know look at that maybe Check he's trying to get his way out he's a little green dude can y'all see him on camera gotta put him right up to the lens put him right up there yeah it'll, you know. make him famous anybody know what that is if you don't know what that what kind of bug that is i'm gonna tell you this is the amazing uh texas green bug 
The scientific name is a doodle bug. He just, he just flew up. Oh, well, have fun, little dude. Yeah, we've seen him here before. I just didn't, I thought he was gone. What does he eat? There's nothing to eat in here. Nothing to drink. What is he? What is he living on? Anyway, weird. So at least it's not a, a ro- <laughs> at least yeah. it's not a roach like some people. Some people are not going to mention any names, but that you know, if you go to their channel, they have roaches crawling around the walls and stuff. It's pretty messed up. Um, but anyway, folks, let me let me get back to what we were doing here. Nice visit from our little little friend there. You watch Minuscule. If you've never watched Minuscule, it's a French, like animated, right? French. Yeah, it's, it's just like a little, an, like short animated clips. And they make little clips. They, they've made two full length uh, motion picture movies, whatever you want to call them. It's pretty cool, and and it's about bugs, the little bugs. Like like there's there's like a ladybug, and there's these spiders, and then there's this like ants. And the red ants are all mean, you know. It's it's pretty funny, but if you check it, that's a funny little cartoon. Go check them out on on YouTube. They're on your little sketches or whatever sketch comedies. Little. Um. <clears throat> so I was looking through, and I found some really cool stuff. And I was looking through, uh, hellhounds. So I went into the. There's no file for it. And I'd be lying if I said there was. So I just go in the computer and. Oh, let's do it. Right. And I and I've looked up uh, hellhounds, and I found a really cool story, and then it led to another story and another one, and then you know, but Anthony's been telling me that my computer's a mess, that it's all over the place. I mean, mine is too, but well, then why are you judging me? Oh, I don't answer that. I know someone why. has my, to. I, shut up, shut up. I already know why because I'm the one that's supposed to be good. St- <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I inserted my foot in my mouth. Fair enough. Okay. I'm not the guy. Let's not talk here. about my flaws. Let's talk about you and how you look. You look like Mr. Peanut in that black shirt. That's all I'm going to say. Look like Mr. Peanut. Well, folks, let's take a vote. Does he look like Mr. Peanut? Let's just say yes or no. Come on, don't, you don't have to be scared. He's he can't hurt you, folks. Okay. Uh, I don't have a monocle. I don't have a bald head. Or no, no. He well, he has a bald head, but he has a top hat. I'm not saying anything. I think you look like Mr. Peanut. I stand by that. It would have worked better if you said I had a peanut head. You look like a peanut, period. No. You just interrupted the story, too, folks. Look, you see what I got to deal with? You're the one who called me Mr. Peanut. Look at this peanut. guy. Look at this guy. Look what he's doing. He's trying to obfuscate you. I have the decency you. to insult me properly. You, you could have called me peanut <laughs> no, head. you know what? It's, I have a, it's just I have for a, that, I'm not going to insult you I have you a very properly. small head. I don't have, have a very a, small head, folks. I don't he have a humongous it. globe he, on my shoulder like you do. He admits he has a okay? small head. But you should have called me Peanut Head, not Mr. Peanut. Mr. Peanut is like one big head. You don't need to tell me how to with, insult with you, arms sir. And legs. I know how to insult you. He's like all head. Half I say of, good day to you, sir. Half of Mr. Peanut's body is his head. I say good day to you, sir. That's all I got to say. Folks, you see what I'm dealing with? You see what I'm rolling with? You see this? This is what I got to deal with. I've been dealing with this for years. I took this kid in, hungry, cold, high, whatever he was. I took him in, and I, and I, and I, gave, I nursed him back to health. Like, but when I would eat pizza, I would give him the crust. You took me in when I was high on life. Now I'm low on it, thanks to you. <laughs> I can feel my life force draining. I give this guy my pizza crust, right? With a little bit of leftover ranch dressing. This is what I. This is the thanks that I get. You see that? You see that? You see what I get? Every now and then, when I was done drinking a soda, I'd give him the, the, mm-hmm. the leftovers. And you know, you, this is you. You, you thank people. You reciprocate. Instead, they just got to argue about whether they look like a peanut or not. You sound like Patrick. So this is the things I get for working overtime. <laughs> and overtime, it's just him sitting on the couch watching TV more. If Patrick was a mad genius. Oh, okay. Is, is that what you want? You're certainly mad. You're mad all the time. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting here smiling, laughing, folks. Do I look like I'm mad? Do I look angry to you? I don't look angry because I'm not. Okay, so what we did, though. We're going to get serious here. Enough for Mr. Peanut. Look, we, we went in and looked at the computer, okay, and we found, we went down a rabbit hole that culminated with some pretty cool stuff. And I managed to get a hold of a guy I went to school with years ago. We'll call him Carl. Um, and he had an encounter with his dad in the Sam, the Sam Houston National Forest, right? Yeah. And Sam Houston National Forest. And we were like, whoa, look at this. This was given to us. So I got in touch with him. Then I got to say something. I went to school with this guy, Mickey, when I was young. He's another one. And had messaged me, reached out to me a few months ago and said, hey, 
I thought he was going to come to the conference. He didn't get it. He lives here in Texas. But he says, look, I got somebody who can tell you some stories. And I got to say this, man. I was watching, if you haven't watched this, Barton Nunley's show, Inhumanoids, from Wednesday. He had a guy on there named Mr. T. I was in the chat. But, uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah, that was that was a good one. Yeah, and so our friend Mickey, when I went in and I looked, I, I talked to him briefly, and I said this was like before that show, whatever. So I had mentioned that I was going to work on some Jitesh, thank you for that donation. Thank you so much for everybody that donated. And thank you for everybody that supported my friends, Barton Nunley and Letitia, and, of course, Blondes and Booze and Michigan Rob and everybody. They're, those are salt of the earth people, folks. Go, go and subscribe, please. Do do yourself a favor. Go subscribe to their channel. You won't be disappointed. They they have some good stuff. So Mickey gives me in touch with this guy. His name is Glenn, and Glenn is very forthcoming. He says, "Look, he doesn't want to come on the show and talk, but he's willing to give us a lot of information." Now tell me, this is not a coincidence. This is not a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. This was tu- this was Tuesday. Right, the day before was it the day before Barton show? Yeah. Okay, it was Tuesday. And then Barton gets this guy on there, and the guy, the first hour, I think he was just talking about his experiences, right? Encryptids and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then they took a little break, and then he comes back and, and then he starts talking about like this program. I mean, it was I don't even know. You folks, you just gotta go check it out. That's all I can tell you is just go check it out. Barton is doing some incredible work, but what do you expect? The guy's a freaking legend, dude. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm honored to be able to work with Barton and David Weatherly. Today I was on the phone with Ken Garrard for like two hours. Yesterday or Tuesday I was on the phone with David. And yesterday I was on the phone with Nick Redfern. Um, th- you know, and I, and I had to stop for a minute. And I thought, oh, you take for granted that did you work with these people? And I just look at them as friends and colleagues now. But there was a time when, you know, these were the people that you looked up to that you wanted to. I mean, Bartonelli's book, The Inhumanoids, it's the best. It is absolutely the best. He's not. It's not doing him justice because you got to re-release it with a new cover. That's my suggestion. I think, and I think we should all vote, and we should push him to do that because he needs to get the recognition he deserves. Amazing author. Him and Ken helped me enormously, you know, uh, a lot, you know, with my books and with everything. They've been very supportive people. So that being said, you know, I mean, you know, so let's get back to the story. So this is what this guy did. He comes up to me and he tells me this place is haunted. And, of course, I made the the wise crack. I'm always cracking wise. You know that. And I said, this is haunted by you and your smell and your friends. That's, you know, that's the only thing I see. I don't see any ghosts. If there were ghosts, I'd be... I'd be seeing him. I don't see him. He's like, yeah, man, this place is haunted, man. And I'm not joking. I've told you this story, Anthony. He was eating like a rack of ribs, like a yeah. rack of ribs. And I thought, who did he kill to eat to make those ribs? You know how pork ribs, they kind of look like people. Like, you could see that, that that could look like, I don't go to certain restaurants. I'm like, I don't know, man. I, you know, I don't I don't order pork ribs. I don't know what they got, what, what it's made from. Could have been roadkill. Could have been a road, could have been a coyote for all but he was just snacking away and he's wiping his hands all over himself, you know. A couple weeks go by and one of my guards, got him Doug. Okay, and Doug, if you're out there, shout out, you know who you are. And Doug tells me, he's like, I think I saw a demon. <laughs> he talked. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not making fun of you, Doug. I'm not making fun of the guy. But he, he knows. I always tease him the way he talked. He'd go, I think I saw a demon. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and his eyes would get big, and then they'd just go back to, like, you know. And he always looked like he was stoned, but he wasn't. He yeah. wasn't. He just looked that way. And he was just like, I remember one time I was with him, and we got pulled over by a cop. And I said, oh, we're on our way to the, you know, go to the job. So I'm dropping him off. His car had broke down. Cop starts harassing him, thinking he was, like, like high. And he gets, he gets us out of the car, you know. And I said, sir, he's sober. Okay, I've been with him for the last hour and a half. I took him to get his phone fixed. He's sober. He starts asking Doug if he was sober, and Doug didn't want to answer. And I got madder and madder, and I said, dude, boy, I'm really getting pissed. And I, t- I said, can you answer this, officer, please? The officer wasn't being a, a jerk. He just asked him, he said, are you, are you stoned? And Doug's like, and he's, I don't have to answer that. And I'm like, oh, my God, dude, I just want to go. Of all times to take a stand. I want to drop you off and just not deal with you. 
So we get to the side. Finally, he goes, you know what? Just another cop pulls up and they just, you know, they just whatever. This guy's so. And uh, so then they mess with him because they knew where he was working at. So they went over there that later that night and they kind of mess with him, you know. But, you know, he kind of had it coming. And I just I was like, dude, why would you do that? Why would you put me through that? He's like, I don't have to answer the questions. I was like, yeah, but it would be a lot easier if you did. Just tell him you always looked mm-hmm. that way. Yeah. I mean, he, de- he did. He just always looked like that. So His haircut didn't help either. Yeah. <laughs> he, had, he had like that round cut, like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Uh, it was not the best look. And we had to make him get a haircut. And then we, I think we had to pay for it, too, to make him do it. He was yeah. like, I'm not going to pay for it. I'm like, wow. But, you know, you need the work. You need the help. Don't we know it? So here's what ended up happening. Doug told me a crazy story, and I remember this story. And I went back and I looked and I found it. I had put, I had typed it up and put it in the deal, you know, and it was like Doug's tail, I guess. And I found that literally today. And I'll tell you how I found it. You know why I ended up looking for hellhounds? I don't think I told you I even. Mm-mm. Okay, because I got trolled. I got trolled by a guy. I'm not going to. My wife's like, don't give him any press. Look, I'm just, I got to show you this, folks, because we're waiting to get the chat filled up a little bit anyway. We got an amazing guest coming on tonight. He's going to tell his tales, his stories, his encounters. This is going to be good. Watch. Okay, let me show you, folks. Like I said, I'm trying to just get through here till we get some people on here. So I got a few minutes. Why not? People people are goofy, man. They're so goofy. I'm going to show Oh, boy. So, folks, you got to take a look at that. Let me see if I can turn it to where you can see it. I don't know if you can back it up a little bit. Uh, let me see. There you go. <laughs> uh, did you get a look at that? That was that was me. That's a picture of me right there, okay? This guy, his name is – I'm like, should I not probably say his name? Nah. He, he's from the U.K., and he hates my guts. He hates my bad, really bad, folks. I'm telling you, like, I'm a big fat tub, he said. He went on his little channel there, and he got 87 views, and he's like, I hate you. You know, you got me kicked out of the chat, you right bastard. <laughs> and I was like, well, you had it coming because you're always playing around in the other chat talking a bunch of trash. But here it is. Look at it. <laughs> I don't know what the heart's for. I guess he thinks I'm a sweetheart or something. And, he, you know, he didn't. Do my beard right, but it did. Well, at least he, he acknowledges that you're the king. You see that little bitty thing in my my fat folds right there? That's a that is an apple. That is a, a Mac, I think. See, I don't actually have that though. I'm not as fat as he tries. People, if I'm gonna take some pictures at the gym and I will release him. I will show you, and I'm not trying to prove anything to this guy. Okay, I just want to show you that I'm not as fat as these people try to make me out to be, and I, I've well, lost some weight since the conference too. Well, if you're the if. if if you're the, he put a crown on your head like like you're the king. If you're the king, and he's British, isn't he like obligated to like worship you? Well, I'm I'm from another country though. I'm the king of of cryptids, I guess, or dog man. That's what everybody's saying now. <laughs> They're saying that I'm I'm the bully and that I'm making everybody bow down to me and stuff. No, no, that's not the case. I'm gonna defend myself on that one. I'm gonna say all I want from from anybody is just to be legit, man. You know. Like Easy E said, want nothing in life but to be legit. Don't quote me, boy, because I ain't said it. You know what I mean? You ought to take a picture of you, like, dressed exactly like that cartoon. And, and just and, sit there like, you know. And just do like a side-by-side. Side. in my stomach, I guess. Yeah. Got to make yourself look fatter, I mean, you know. But uh, I will say this. I will say that My hair's out of control. I thought it would look better, but it's not. I'm going to put this hat on so I can... It's not a crown, but it'll work. Look, you know, I, I, I'm flattered that you think I'm the king, and then someone else put the the uh, put me on an iron throne with a crown or whatever. I, I, what are you crowning me? What am, what am I supposed to be? I have no desire to be your king. Okay, I don't. The king would have to deal with all the madness of everything. Why would you want that? Nobody in their right mind should want that. Somebody that wants power probably shouldn't have it. Okay, we're all equal. We're all the same. I don't look at myself as any better than anybody else. I don't care what the numbers say or how big your channel is or how smart your channel is. There's nobody above anybody else. Now, are there people who have done a lot more work and done a lot better? Yeah. I just named a couple earlier. Nick Redford. 
you know, um, man from state over. I don't even want to give him any publicity, whatever. But uh, he claimed that his buddy up in Missouri has the most books. No, dude, I don't think so. You think you're forgetting about Nick Redfern. Now, if you're talking about, like, dumb fiction stuff, yeah, of course he does. He's the best. He's the awesome. Now, you got to remember, this guy has written five pamphlets. His largest one, I think, was 59 pages. Good job. If I was spitting things out with AI, I'd be, it'd be on and popping. I, I made Ken laugh today. I said, I'm in the middle of writing my next book. And he goes, "Which? how far are you? I said, I'm in three pages in. He goes, you have a six-page book? <laughs> I said, yes. As a matter of fact, I do, Ken. It's a six-page book. I don't like your tone, sir. I'm, I'm writing smaller books now because other people are. And I watch how you talk to the king. I'm a king now. Mm-hmm. And a king must demand respect from everyone. So the king's new book, it doesn't exist, but you have to just acknowledge it as the greatest book ever. <laughs> and somebody has to eventually tell the king that he's not, he's not beloved. Somebody's got to say, look, sir, we really don't like you. Okay. You're not the coolest guy on the block. And you're like, I'm the bad guy. So anyway, let's get back to this story. Like we're just like I said, we got 300 something people now, but the numbers are weird. They're kind of jumping around. But look, so, so Doug tells us this story, and I haven't talked to Doug in a while. It's been a few years, so maybe he'll he'll reach out to me about this. But he told me he saw a black dog on the job site. He said, "I'm sitting there, and what made me think about this encounter, and what made me look for it was, and and look up that file was just because this guy." He uses as his avatar like a black dog with red eyes. And I thought, oh, it's old Chuck because he's from England. So, you know, old Chuck. And so this right nutter, you know, he comes after me and uh, bringing his shite to me. And I'm very angry. And so I looked it up and I found that story. But it reminded me of, of, of when I worked at that site and somebody had claimed that they were and this is a weird story. Now this is a really weird story. I'd almost forgotten about this. The guy comes back when Scorpion was working there and tells him that he was that dog. Hmm. Yeah. Doug claims to have seen a black dog with red eyes. He said, dude, this thing was huge. And I thought when he when he told me this, this is nuts. Barry, thank you for that donation. Uh, who else? Carlos Hernandez. Thank you, Carlos. Appreciate it. And so he comes back and he says, uh, he says, you know, I, I went by there to check on him. He tells me that he saw this black dog, huge black dog. He said it was as tall as his truck. I was like, whatever, man. You know, I, I didn't know one way or the other. Now, he did have something weird happen to him at another place where I heard footsteps that what sounded like a canid something on the ground so who who am i to, to judge or say this person's lying or they're, or they're not lying i don't know but that but about a month later i think i think it's probably about a month after that it was a while scorpion was working there and i remember him, him saying that this homeless guy he described him to a t it was this long-haired homeless guy that looked like the life of brian monty python's life of brian <laughs> And he comes up and he's like, I found an old shoe. And you know, he comes up, the, that guy that was eating the ribs, okay, probably his friend, I don't know. And he tells Scorpion, he says, he goes, I came up here in the visage of a black dog, scared your friend, and he left. So my first concern was like, Doug, did you leave sight? <laughs> so I called, I, no, I really did. I called him and I said, Doug. Did you leave the, the job site? And he's like, no. I said, well, a crazy homeless guy with long hair came and said you did. And Doug's reaction was like anybody. Oh, let's take his word over mine. And I said, okay, I'm not saying that you did. I'm saying he said you did. But he knew about the black dog. So I asked Doug a very simple question. I said, did you tell anybody other than me and my brother about your encounter? He said no. All right. So I had told you, Anthony, and I had told Tony about his encounter. This was years ago. 
none of them had worked that site since Doug had seen that dog. Nobody had worked it but him and Scorpio. So I asked Scorpion, I said, did you tell somebody that might have gotten back to the homeless people in the area? And he says, no, I didn't. I don't know how that guy knew that. So a very creepy thing, very weird. So if Father Time is to be believed, he turned himself into old Chuck and went up and scared our guard. Tell me what you think of that. I mean, is that real? Do you think that's real? Could that possibly be correct? Because that was really, really weird. I mean, there's a lot of weird stuff that's happened to us, man. I mean, I can't even tell you. What about the window that broke over there? You remember that? Over where? Over at, well, I don't want to say the name of the site because we still do business with those people. But um, the one that Tony saw, uh, the woman, or whatever it was. The oh, the, the neighborhood in Weaver Garden? Mm-hmm. Windows that broke outward. Yeah. Happens. That's happened at uh, the Colorado one. Mm-hmm. It happened at that one. It happened at Springs. Um, yeah, just some weird stuff. You know, you, you, you're wondering, like, what is that? You know, when, when we were working at that site, when we first started there, it was a two-man team, and it was me and my brother. And it was a weird thing. It was a really weird thing. There was somebody that, that worked there that claimed, and this is the, the, how we first really started talking to the people who, you know, we met from the Hernandez Ranch. And, you know, that was when we, they came to us and said that somebody had thrown paint buckets through the windows. And I thought I was expecting to see the paint buckets inside the house splattered everywhere. Teenagers or somebody, homeless people, whatever, decided to vandalize it. No, they, they were thrown from the inside out. And uh, 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 Jerry told us, he said, look at this. What is this? Can't blame us because it happened from inside and the doors were locked. I don't know. Weird, weird place. And we saw a couple of weird dogs there, two big black dogs. Didn't think nothing of it. Didn't didn't see their eyes glowing red, but Doug claimed he did, and that was at that was at a, a site that wasn't at the same site. That one was down the road. Thank you, Matt, for that donation. Appreciate that. So you're looking at a site down the road from that particular place. I don't know. They're they're, they're like it was in two parts. Wasn't that like there was a north and a south, right? The, bo- the one at the bottom of the hill, but wasn't there like something else that divided it? There was like another, like there were some houses that were already there or something. And then there was like, there was a north a north end and a south end. Uh-huh. Yeah. We, we worked so many, but I remember that one in particular. The north end is where I saw the black dogs running around. The south end, I worked there, and that's where the, the windows got broken out <clears throat> the second time. The second time I was there in a window, I think I've talked about it on the show. But you get some weird stuff that happens, and you can't explain it. You can't explain it, like this guy saying that he was that black dog. Who the hell told this guy that story? If nobody told that guy anything, then how did he know that? I mean, it was a weird thing. It's baffling. <clears throat> I mean, just stuff like that all the time, just weird, you know. And and if I think if uh, because of the nature of what we do mm-hmm. and the show and everything, that's why we notice the weird stuff. Because a lot of times, I don't think we would notice. Yeah, I don't think anybody would notice that. I mean, you wouldn't, you know. But we do. Thank you for that donation, TF. Appreciate it. So you're sitting there looking at this, you know, at these these emails and these messages and whatever. And you're like, wow, that's a weird story. And people, they'll they'll tell you weird stories. And you have to be willing to listen when somebody's telling you something. Um, Even though sometimes you're going like, I don't know if I believe this. Um, And then sometimes you kind of jump the gun. You know, you can always make a mistake and then and then dismiss it out of hand like I did the LBL story with the teenagers. Well, I, I don't know. I just thought these people sounded like they were doing something they shouldn't have been doing. And I didn't know Barton Nunley personally at that time when I got that story. If I would have known him personally and had a had a more of a relationship with, with him and, and with, with Elijah Henderson, 
you know, Martin Groves, Daryl Denton, all those guys, the Tennessee, Kentucky crew, if I would have known those guys a lot better, Johnny Henderson, God rest his soul, I might have been, hey, can you tell me what's going on here? Because I don't know if this could be real or what. But I won't make that mistake again. I had somebody reach out to me from the Coalition for Thinking, whatever. I'm not going to mention his name. I'm not going to be mean. Uh, told me, he goes, you just you just take anybody's story and you just believe it. I bet if I told you a bunch of crap, you'd take it and you'd believe it. And I said, no, sir, you've already told, you've already exposed yourself as a doubter. <laughs> Why would I take your story? <laughs> and that made him mad. He got madder. He was like, he's like, oh, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Josh Turner in capital letters, you know, like I need to know that you're angry and you're yelling, okay? You come from that group to confront me. I'm pretty sure you're angry, all right? And I told him, I said, no, I wouldn't take your story because you're, you know, you're, you're so mad. <laughs> that didn't, I didn't set well with him. The Cutler, thank you. Uh, appreciate that donation. I, I just told him like this. I said, if you were somebody that came out of the blue and you told me a story and I didn't believe it, I would have to talk to you. Now, I'm going to say something on here and I'm going to say it and it might make some people upset, but you cannot say that your stories are 100% vetted and true because you don't know. You don't know. You have. I have to stress that, folks. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's no way to do that. I mean, you can do it as hard and far as you can. You can have someone come on your show and tell you whatever they want to tell you. And this is not about the guests I'm having on tonight or the guests that anybody's had on recently or anybody on Voldemort's show. No. I'm talking about anybody's show. At any time, that person could say whatever the heck they want to say. And that being said, Vulture, you know, if you all know, you know who was on my show, I'm going to put the disclaimer on there that I don't, I don't believe everything that was said. So if you go back and you listen to those episodes, then you take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, it's actually a gross misrepresentation to, to say, like, you have true vetted stories. You don't know. I mean, you're, 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 you're using your, you know, your better judgment, but that's only going to get you so far. Well, well, we do. I don't know what they oh, do. Oh, yeah. But ultimately, there's only Touché. so much Thank you Thank you for do. that donation. Yeah, ultimately, there's so much you can do. Thank you for that donation, Two Shades. I was talking while you were. Sorry about that. I was being rude. I was being like you. Okay. Well, you don't do that, typically. But you're you're a very rude young man. I'm just saying. It's hard to... to to not speak while you're speaking because you're constantly speaking. Well, you know, I don't fart on people in, in, the, in the theater. I mean, that's something I don't do. I, don't I didn't know. know them kids. Who cares? Teenagers, but still. <laughs> they didn't deserve that. They laughed at it. That's all I'm They saying. didn't laugh. They looked like they were very upset. And if they were strong enough, they probably would beat you up. Okay, I laughed at it. <laughs> they didn't laugh. They were just like, oh, my God. <laughs> and you didn't, you, the, and he, didn't, he did it in front of them, folks. It wasn't like he went over to them, you know, but there were these, I mean, they might have been in their late teens or something. I don't know. But they're, they're, they're kids to us, to me, they're kids. But they were walking up and they were talking about the movie and whatever, blah, blah, blah. And this dude just rips, just crop dust them, just completely crop dust them. And I turned around and I was like, wow, dude, really? And, you know, Nelly was like, that's terrible. You know, of course, you know, I played along. I didn't, I thought it was funny, but I had to act like I was all indignant. I was like, my God, man! Stop! Why would you do that? I mean, to be fair, I didn't. I didn't I do it the on the them. I just did it, and they happened. They to walked it. right. Inevitably walked into it. I mean, that's not my fault. Uh, right? That's just bad timing on their part. Yeah, I'll say. So, Jimmy, Jimmy just said, anytime you want an interview, I think I already set one up. Next week we have another person. Then the week after, I got you scheduled, Jimmy. Can you do that? I'm pretty sure I did. I, I don't know. I, I I got a couple other people I talked to. Yeah, I got a cut on my thumb. What the heck? Nowadays, you walk into a bathroom, you don't want to be walking out with a cut or something. We went into the bathroom. What we, I went in there to use, but it was a Domino's, right? Yeah. It was a Domino's. It was when Linda Moulton Howe had my book and Joe Barger on there. And I go to the bathroom, and the, and the girl comes up. The, the, I don't know if she was a manager, but she had the key. She's like, be really careful. Don't touch anything. People come in here to shoot up all the time. I'm like, oh. I'm looking around. I'm like, I'm standing there. Like, I mean, lucky I didn't have to sit or, you know, but what are you doing? 
I don't want to touch anything. You get like a prick or something on your finger, and then next thing you know, you go to the doctor, and they're like, oh, you got hepatitis. You know, it could happen. I mean, that's that goes along with being around these homeless people. I'm telling you that. And now I'm not talking about homeless people down in your luck. I'm talking about people that are willing and just they choose to be homeless and they live like that. And a lot of them are there because of what they do. And she told us that, and Nellie was going into one restroom, and I was going to the other. And of course, there's they're gender neutral. And I was just like, <laughs> so she was like, oh, pass, you know, I'll wait. We weren't that far from the house. And we had actually gone to the store next door, and they said, we don't have a restroom. You could use it at Domino's. Well, I know I don't have a restroom. Nobody has a restroom anymore because nobody wants a homeless person that's bathing in there. You know? I was in San Francisco, and I had to step over a guy who literally had the rig in his arm. That was great. That was that was impressive. Way to go. Can't wait to move there and live there. Me and, me and two of my friends were sitting there going like, dude, what the heck? And I mean, he moved like he kind of went like, Ugh, you know, so he was alive. Yeah. Because I thought maybe I need to go tell somebody maybe this guy's he's OD'd. And he was like, Ugh, you know, looking and kind of, you know, and you were just like, oh, Never mind. I'll just go my pants in the truck. It's all right. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it. You know, that's that's the world we're living in. So, I got to tell you, there, there, there we're going to tell some stories on on some encounters on Sunday. And I went, I dug these out, and I started digging and went further and further and further. But thank you though for for doing that for me. UK guy, because I thought, you know, I was sitting there looking at this on the computer, <laughs> listening to this guy rant, and um, <clears throat> I was cracking up, too. He was cracking me up because he was so mad. You're so mad. He was angry. You're a rot not a you. I hate you. Blah, 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 blah. Venom spewing it everywhere. And uh, I'm laughing. Thank you, Liberty, for that donation, man. PRT is one of the few spots of sanity in my life. Wow. But, uh, yeah, the guy was just like, you know, and so I was looking and I saw the little, the, the picture come up of the dog, of the black dog with the red eyes. And so I went to my black dog and I thought, what do I got in there? And I have two files. Actually, one of them, you're right, I should clean it up. One of them is just, there's nothing in there. There's one thing in there and I guess I had forgotten I had it so I made another one and was like oh here we go you know I don't know if anybody else has, has such a mess with their emails but I, in my defense though we get a lot right I mean oh yeah I mean that's it's in my defense I'm not trying to say that because people I and I messaged somebody thank you Kate for that donation oh my much. gosh Kate's the best I get in there and I send somebody a message saying hey I want to talk to you on Instagram she was on Instagram and she's like you know, I'm this and I'm that. She was mad, very mad. So that I wasted too much time talking to, to people, trash people, talking about trash people on there and not paying attention to her, her story. No. Ma'am, in my defense, once again, I'm going to say, do you understand how many people reach out to me? Do you understand how many people want me to tell their stories? I'm not bragging. I'm not saying I'm the greatest storyteller of all time. That's the other guy. What I'm going to tell you is that I have a lot of people who want to be heard. Now, we were in the middle of a war. That's up to them whether or not they want to be. Thank, uh, thank you for that donation, uh, Patricia. But um, thank you. Blondes and booze in the house. We got uh, Jimmy Blanton in the house. I saw a Boomer in there earlier. I don't know if he's still in there, BMR. Say hi if you are. And Barton's in the house, along with Letitia. So welcome, my friends. But, uh, you know, I, I just look at this situation, and I'm thinking, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to ignore anybody. And I'm sorry if I may offended you. I'll call you A. I won't say your name on here. Um, I'm sorry. You know, I had a lot going on, I'm afraid. There's been a lot of spiritual warfare that's been happening, too, because these people, they're not just playing around. They're not. They're sending stuff. I had a nightmare about my one of my best friends. Woke up mad at him. 
Yeah. Very simple. Sounds very familiar, doesn't it? People in the chat who know you who you are. Sounds familiar. Yeah. And it was about my friend Arash. She's one of my best friends. And I, and I know that it was just deceit. Somebody messing with my, trying to mess with me. But they're not going to win. You're not going to stop us. We're not the holiest people in the world. We're not the, you know, the the white knights, whatever. But we do we do our best. And my God is more powerful than your God. I can tell you that right now. And your God is not my God. Your father is not my father. Because my father doesn't condone what you're doing. You don't play around with that stuff. You know? Calling demons angels. You know? Patreon at pip.com, PRT Podcast. Join the Patreon, folks. We do that. We love that you do that. We have a member thing here, too, like all the other uh, channels do, but we don't really do much with that. But it does highlight your name and shows that you are a supporter of the show. So there's not really any incentive to do more than that, but we encourage you to do the Patreon. The Patreon, $10 through $20 through $30, $40, $50, and each one gives you more. We are happy that we, we, we sent off about a dozen Patreon, and when they arrived today. I saw the yep. little the ping, 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 ping. Yesterday and today, people were getting their stuff. So congratulations to everybody who got their stuff from the Patreon. Hey, and people that upgraded, we appreciate it, and we're going to take care of you. So in honor of my British friend, I thought I'd wear the Danger Mouse shirt. Danger Mouse and his little friend Penfield. I don't know if anybody ever watched that. This Before is my time. Right here. It's from the 80s. Danger Mouse. But uh, he had a little, like, a gopher. It was, like, his friend. It was, like, his little sidekick, kind of like, <laughs> you know. And, uh, you know. Keith. What's up, Keith Van Rensler, guys? Good friend of mine. Keith. Keith. Say prayers for Keith. He's recovering from surgery. I was worried about him. He made it through the other side. He's good. But you got to take care of yourself, Keith. No smoking. No smoking. Very hard to do. I, I dipped snuff for 23 years. I was coming back from the coast, and I spit. In a cup, this is a true story, spit in a cup, and it was all blood. My wife was asleep. I looked over at her. She was asleep. The boys were asleep in the back. Anthony, Tony. I said, this is it. I threw it out, and I threw the can out. Yeah, I littered. I just said, to hell with it. And then I took all the other trash and threw it out on the highway, too. And I got pulled over, and I told the highway patrolman, I said, hey, you know who I am? I'm Danger Mouse. <laughs> yeah, that's a ticket. And he said, oh, my gosh, I watched you as a kid. Get out of here, you crazy kook. And I just said, okay. And I gave him the finger and drove off. <laughs> true story. Yeah. At least it wasn't AI generated. <laughs> it was a true lie. You know, I could tell lies, too. I can come up with some stuff, you know. Anyways, folks, so I'm going to call my friend here. He's going to come on. I call him my friend. I had a conversation. I like the guy. He's a really cool guy. He's got a job. He works hard. And he's a guy that works. I mean, you know, that's a good thing. Nowadays, about 10 people are working. Um, but remember, Sunday, we're going to tell some, tell some stories. I got one from Mexico. Oh, dude, when the guy was telling me this stuff, it was the hair was standing. I told you a little bit about it, Anthony. Oh, Tony's not here tonight. Tony's taking a little break. Tony may not be back on Sunday either. He needs some time. Um, we got and we got a lot of work, so he decided to just throw himself into that, and that's what he's doing. He might he he made a comment that he might show up to say hi, but uh, we're just gonna need to give him some time, you know. And it's it's these people, you know, doing what they do. It's been rough for him and Anthony. You have no idea, you know. And then we're told. Just you know, we just gotta. We just gotta. It's it's been hard, man. These people, they're they're uh, what they're doing is just beyond the pale, and what they've done is beyond the pale. So whenever somebody tells me, "Oh, you know, you're giving them too much attention. You're doing this, you're doing that," I know exactly what I'm doing. Please just let me do it. And nobody's asking you to get involved. Nobody's asking you to go fight for me. I have not called to arms everybody. I haven't told everybody, "Hey, man, go mass report their chats." What they did to us. The only thing you should do a report is if they're harassing us. That's it. And they're making statements that are harassing. Then you, then you report them. Why are you reporting them? 
Otherwise, they're just being stupid. Let them. They're reporting our videos, and they're not even talking about them when they're reporting our videos. Or we're not even using their names. And they're like, oh, yeah, this guy's bad, you know, whatever. But, uh, and, and speaking of Barton, I have agreed tentatively, I don't know exactly when, but I'm going to go in the spring and become a member of the Brotherhood of the Wolf. I... And I think I think there's two other people that are that are deceased. They're they're women, but they're just, I think one of them is Linda Godfrey. I'm not for sure if that's correct, Martin. Correct me if I'm wrong on the chat here. But I have to go out there to actually become a full fledged member, not an honorary member. Okay, I'm not a full fledged member, so we got to go out there and and sit in the cold and eat hot dogs <laughs> and kill a werewolf. I forgot about that part. Do I get to be one just for going out there, or do I have to actually kill the beast? Because if by werewolf you mean a juicy double cheeseburger, I will slay it forthright, without question. Bam! Mm -hmm. It's on and popping. You remember, you saw how fat I was in that cartoon, right? I mean, yeah. it was like, there was like the, the belly fat, and then there was like this, <laughs> whatever whatever it is that, that the guy, Ike says I have, whatever, he pretends like he, he's not that guy, but yeah, it's him. Yeah, but a great cartoon, and there was another one he drew of me too. But he didn't do the beard; he just put the little this little over her. He forgot about the beard. <laughs> you were in such a hurry to antagonize me, you forgot the beard. I would have like actually made that into stickers if I didn't think you'd be mad about using your deal. All you got to do is show up, bro. I'll take care of the rest. All right, cool. So you kill the, the beast. I'll show up. But I can say this. I can lose weight, okay? Certain people, they're going to be ugly their whole life, and there's nothing they can do about it. So, you know, one thing I'm going to say, and then we're going to call our guest, people don't take personal responsibility anymore. They don't take it serious. What I mean is people will become angry not because of the way that they are, but because you see the way that they are. And then they become exasperated, not with themselves, because they can they know damn well that they need to change and do better. No, they're they're upset because you see that they need to do better and you call them out on it. And when you say, Hey man, maybe you shouldn't be such a crap hill. Well, why are you why are you uh noticing that? Why are you opening your mouth now that you did notice it? Why can't we just go back to the way things are where I do all kinds of horrible and nefarious things and you don't you don't ever open your mouth about it? The worst thing you can do as a person, and I'm not going to proselytize all night, I promise. I'm just going to tell you this. But the worst thing you can do as a person is not hold yourself accountable. Do you know that if we all held ourselves accountable, we wouldn't have all these problems? That's the truth. If each and every one of us would look at ourselves in the mirror and go, damn, I need to do better. The one thing I can sit here and I can say is that I actually do try to hold myself accountable. I've always been hard on myself. Even my own dad, who's not a big fan of me. I'm not a big fan of him. There's no love loss. We know that. But my dad told me many times, he says, you are too hard on yourself. My parents used to tell me that. They used to tell me. They would hold me to a higher standard. I always told them, you guys made me that way. I've never wanted to be able to, to somebody could say I was a hypocrite. And I want to tell you that from the bottom of my heart, I really believe that if, if a lot of these people would just hold themselves accountable for their behavior, then there would be a, a world of change could take place. You know, there's a saying that says, be the change you want to see. That's a cliche, but it's the truth. If you were to go into the bathroom and look at yourself every day and say, man, I got to do better. I mean, I look at myself in the mirror and I go, I mean, I got to do something. I got these love handles out of control. I, you know, I'm in my 40s, late, my late 40s. You know, I, I need to do something with myself. I need to, do, you know, let's let's do something. And there are people who tell me all the time, they're like, dude, you've done all this stuff already. What more do you need to do? I said, as much as I can. Time is short. You don't have a lot of time. Why spend it? Why waste it being a deceitful piece of crap? 
be honest at least with yourself and say, oh, damn, I need to do better. I need to, I need to get better. I, I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to make it. You know, I get this anxiety and I feel like I'm just going to pass out and I'm just, I'm just laying there in bed. My wife, she's like, honey, what is wrong? I told her, I don't know. I just feel like I'm running a marathon in my mind. I want everyone to be happy. I want to do as much as I can for people before I go. But I also, I, I want to be happy. And what's going to make me happy is for me to do better. You know, I, I, I can only wish that I was as good as some of these people in this field. I mean, when you look at somebody like Linda Godfrey and what she did for this field, you can't, there's no, you can't duplicate that. And then you look at somebody like Barton. I mean, to me, he wrote the best. I mean, I say this all the time and I'm not joking. It's the best book ever. I, dude, I've read it twice. It's, I don't even read books twice. And I'm lying. I didn't finish the last two chapters of Barton or the last bit because I didn't, I never did go back. I've read most of it the second time. But it, I can't tell you enough. And then Mysterious Kentucky, that's another one. It was so good. And the top five in, Ch in one of Chad's books. I was talking to Chad about it. David Weatherly. Great authors, got, just amazing people, did all kinds of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> you, you look at these people and you think, man, look at, look at like Adam Davies. He's been all over the world doing all these things. Ron Moorhead. And you look at yourself and you feel like you're, you're not adequate to be, you know. You look at these guys with these big channels that are actually just big, you know, doing all this stuff. You're not them. You know, all you can do is be the best version of you. You play the hand that you're dealt. God gave you that. And you, you just got to be the best version you can of yourself. But I damn, at least try to do that. Some of these people, they're phoning it in. <laughs> they're not even trying. How are you going to write all these books? And they're just, it's just a bunch of AI, you know, you, you're making shows with AI. It's the, it's going to be the death, the destruction of this field. I hate AI with a passion. And then they're buying subs, you know, and, and I guess buying views. I don't know if they're buying Some of them aren't. I don't know what they're doing. But, you know, what, what? where are we headed with this AI? You can write a book with it. You can do stories with it. And what's real? You don't even know what's real. And you can't expect these people to hold themselves accountable because they act like children. Now, I'd be the first person to step up and say, look, man, I, I made a mistake. I hold myself accountable for what I've done wrong. I made a mistake. I brought Vulture onto my show. I put him on there. It's my own fault. But I damn, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, man, that, that you should go look at it. Don't give it any more views. If we take it out, then there's going to be this, it's not going to, so I was talking to a guy, and he's actually he's got a, he's got a channel to a small channel. You can go check him out. And his name is uh, Brent. It's called the Tall Ones. The only person that I knew on there that he was complaining about on that channel was Melba Ketchum. Now Melba's a good friend of mine. And I don't I don't stand by him attacking her. And I don't know the other people. No disrespect to them because I don't know them. I didn't even watch them. But he said something about Vulture on there. And I was talking to him, and he can attest to this. And I told him, I said, what do you think I should do? And he said, well, I mean, you know, if you really feel strongly about it, I mean, you hold yourself accountable and say, look, you, you interviewed the guy. And I don't think he's legit. I mean, I don't. You know, I don't feel like talking about him anymore. I've been not wanting to talk about him for a while. Um, he was the only one that I just was, was actually kind of close to at one time. I mean, not say close. We didn't talk every day. But my hair is not going to work. Look at this. What is this? What, what the heck is going on with it? Whoa. You know, I mean, he wasn't like my best friend or anything, but I was I was friends with him. You know, so and that's on me to expose you to somebody who didn't wasn't legit. I, and I don't know if he's being honest or not. I really don't. I can't tell you whether that show, what he's saying is correct, but I can tell you what I think. And the answer is no. So, you know, and then, and, you know, if he, if he wants to be be upset about it, let him be upset. He wants to, you know, do whatever. Let him do whatever. I don't care. Let him rage. 
I didn't betray him. Let's put it that way. So, you know, you got this situation where I'm, I'm trying to do the best I can and trying to bring you the best I can and trying to be the best I can, but I can only be me. I can't be anything more than me. I can do funny voices and imitate people and whatever. But at the end of the day, I'm still me. And you just have to accept it or, or walk away. A lot of people have told me, hey, we don't want to watch you anymore. We don't want to. Well, then don't do it. More's the pity. I think I'll be okay. That's that's my rant for today. I just I just want you to know that, folks. I'm not even trying, you know. But the stories are coming up. We got a guy that's going to come on, and he's going to talk. Sunday, we're going to tell stories. It's going to be a bunch of stuff that's going to come out. Um, just a bunch of just we're going to talk. We're going to talk about the black dog. We're going to talk about dog man, and we're going to talk and we're going to talk about dog man tonight too. Um, but, but this, this gentleman is going to come on and he's going to talk about it. Uh Uh-oh. What happened? You want to type it? Not. Mm-mm. Nope, 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 nope. Hold on. Let me try something. Oh, man. Well, okay. Move the camera to you real quick. One second, folks. Asking for verification. What? Hang on. Let me try something real quick. Shoot. All right, let me try this. Hold on, folks. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not letting me do anything. Why is this? Is this thing disconnected? <laughs> it rains and pours. This thing just froze up. Oh boy! Well, the joys of modern technology. I just think, folks, when I get out of here, I got to go to straight to bed because I got to go work in the morning for twelve hours. These people can't do their jobs. No, I got. I got to be able to touch. I got to do it. That thing is—is it—is it broken or what? I think the battery's dead or something. I don't know. Oh, I think it needs batteries. That's right. I forget about that. Yeah, I'm gonna open it. All right. Well, this looks real professional here. Let's see. Put it in here. Yeah, that's 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 yeah, I know. Let's try that. There it is. Looks like the phone. No, 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 your phone. I got nothing. Try it again. Try to get it to. There it goes. Did it that time. Here it is right here.
No, I got it working. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll get started here in just a minute. Just, it's annoying because Facebook logs you out for no, for no apparent reason. And then yeah, he couldn't log in because our, our Bluetooth keyboard wasn't working. So, but it's all good. See where I got. Screen is like falling. Oh man. Let's see what we can do here. There we go. All right. Nothing's happening. Tell me what's that. Well, I don't know about his name. I don't know if he wants to be. I get a text it to you. So this keyboard's broken then. Just one more thing. Type that in. That should, that should get him up there. There it is, right there. Top. There you go. Bam. It's very quiet. Can y'all hear that, folks? Hey, guys. Can you hear me? <clears throat> hey, man. Hey. Technical difficulties. Gotta love it. Gotta yeah, love it. I'm sitting here trying to. The <laughs> keyboard just went out and decided not to work. Ugh, so, sucks. Yeah. Yeah. How do I sound? Do I sound good in my end, audio wise. You got some kind of echo going in the back, kind of a like a buzzing noise or something bouncing out. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, let me change locations real quick. I'm at work. So let me just swap locations and see how that works for you guys. Okay. Okay. All right. Give me like one minute. I'll call you back. All right. All right. Okay. Thanks. Bye. So I don't I don't know how he feels about it. I didn't ask him about his anonymity or his name or whatever. I mean I'm kinda of big on that. Making sure that people aren't messed with. So that's why I didn't say his name out loud. So, yeah. Some people get upset. They're like, Why don't you say their name? Because would you want somebody messing with you? Not everybody is okay with seeing a werewolf, dude. I mean, you know, some people I mean it's too late for me. I mean, my clients already know. I accidentally sent one of my clients a link to my show today. She could be watching right now going, this guy's out of his damn mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want this guy watching my stuff. Hopefully she knows me enough now to know that I'm, you know, I try to, I try to be, you know, correct. You know, but, uh, yeah, I did see some weird stuff. Oh, man. He's dead. He's unalived. What, the bug? The bug, the little green dude. Oh, that poor thing. I knew he was probably getting skinnier. Look at that. Oh, man. I hate to see that. I don't know where he went now. He's deceased. <laughs> That's too bad. I like animals. I like life, period. should respect it. I wish I could be a vegetarian, but that's going to be really hard. I don't eat much beef anymore. I just can't do it. But I don't. I just don't. I know a lot of people do. <clears throat> and um, I just. Okay. See if he's on there. Except. There it goes. Okay, we got you. All right. Take two. How's this? That's good. That's good. You, you sound good. Perfect. Perfect. 
yeah, I work in a data center, so it's uh, it's always a room that's buzzing or humming or knocking or sometimes exploding. So yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to find peace and quiet around here. Well, um, at work. Do you do you yep. want to keep your name? Uh, you want to be anonymous or? Um, no, I'll, I'll tell my first name. I will use Larry. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm Larry. Um, <laughs> I tell you, it, being a listener for God, it was like four years, and then actually going on and like telling your story, mm-hmm. way different. Way, uh, <laughs> it's weird. I can see why people just you know, like last minute, like, ah, I'm not gonna do it because. It is different having something you don't tell anybody and then just like going out on the internet and just spilling the beans. It's crazy, but it takes a lot. It takes, it's a different, uh, different, you know, arena. Yeah. That's why so many yeah. people just choose. They say, I want you to tell me, tell you, tell you, tell my story because they don't want to, <clears throat> they don't want to have to deal with it. It's a hassle, I guess. Yeah. It's a hassle. And then they're like, ah, oh, if I sound weird on online or, I guess mag two different reasons, but uh, yeah, but you know, I've been listening to you for a long time, man, and uh, partly what you say and explain things. I have a multitude of experiences, and I always felt like, well, I've ever kind of just laid it all out there. That would sound crazy, and I know I'm not crazy, so I'm like, well, I'll just keep my mouth shut because you know, like everything was before, very like compartmentalized, like you always talk about. And then when you have multiple experiences, you're just like, dude, like, what is this? You know, like, if everyone just has one thing or the other, then, you know, you just sound like a liar. Yeah. You know? And this is not Larry Fisher, folks. Larry Fisher is in the chat, actually. Larry Fisher. Fisher and Sons Roofing, folks, for all your roofing needs. But, uh, yeah, he's a sponsor. But this is, you're somebody else. You, You actually, you're from Georgia, right? Yeah, so I kind of have a, a weird um, run around. <laughs> so I was born in Brooklyn. That's where my family's from. We're Italian. So came over on the boat and uh, made shop in Brooklyn. Then when I was a little kid, my parents were like, you know what? Big city. It's kind of rough. Let's move to the opposite side, <laughs> South Florida. And that's where I was raised for most of my life until I was like 13 or so. Came up to Georgia, discovered what hills and snow was. That was very weird. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I've been here ever since. So when it came time to buy a house, I was like, yeah, I'll stay in Georgia. Not so bad. Leaves change colors, less mosquitoes. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so um, I guess there's a little bit of back history about me. It's kind of like what I do. Um, I'm a plant plan engineer. Um, what do you do? Pretty active. <clears throat> I'm a plant engineer, so. On the mechanical side, so basically all these big buildings with you know computers and all that stuff, they need their own separate programming automation to manage the cooling side. They have to have all these safeties, redundancies, and this crazy, crazy overly engineered cooling systems because you got to deal with enthalpy and wet bulb and all that stuff. So there's like a whole other side to it besides the IT hardware side, and that's where I come in. My company, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So, so they'll keep guys on site. Tony just decided to show up. I didn't think you were going to show up. We were telling everybody you were not showing up today. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm kind of hoping you weren't. I don't know if you guys know this, <laughs> but it's raining outside. If Your you, glasses are. <laughs> if you could just kind of like. My new one comes in soon. <laughs> oh, Sorry. You. Sorry, Larry. You're good. You no, up. you're good. <clears throat> so, Larry, you, me and you talked, uh, or I should say you and I. You and I talked. Yes. Well, about two weeks ago, a week ago, was it? Yeah, about that. About that. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess about two weeks. And, and and you you were telling me your encounters, not all of you, you didn't get to finish whatever because I had things to do and you had things to yeah. do. You were at work. You work a lot. You're like me. Yeah. So yeah, work do you want to where do you want to start? Because you had oh, man, some dog question. man experiences. Now I told yeah. you, like I said, I, we could record too to finish it all up, but if you want to tell the the you know, start wherever I, you want. You can start from when you're young or what? Yeah, I think I'll start. I was mulling that over today in the past couple of days, really, just trying to get mm. everything pieced together and how it would sound for your show and for the audience. So I think I'll start like from the beginning. I was so what? born. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the beginning, I'll do my, my uh, you know who I voice. Born. I was a small baby and I knew they wouldn't harm me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Nice and dramatic effects, right? <laughs> 
So yeah, I guess I'll start from, from the beginning. You know, yeah, right. I'll start from the top and I'll uh, kind of lay some groundwork. And then when we get to the main um, dog bench encounter, I'll just kind of go into there and then trail off. And then I guess, uh, yeah, go from there. So, um, yeah, so basically my mother in the family is the one who mainly has a lot of, uh, you know, spiritual encounters, a lot of ghost encounters and stuff like that. Not so much my father. So I always heard stories from her growing up. And um, one in particular always stuck out with me uh, when she moved here to, to Florida. Um, she had an abusive, you know, stepfather who would do, uh, you know, uh, pretty messed up stuff to her yeah. and things like that. <clears throat> And, uh, like, it was a real, like, bad situation. She always hated his guts. You know, she actually told me she kept a little, like, jar of milk and, like, a, like, a mason jar. And the lid was, like, popped. So it was, like, uh, bad bacteria. And she always kept it in her room as, like, uh, you know, one day I'm going to kill him, you know. So it was, it was bad. Um, so eventually he died when she turned 17. So right before she moved out. This is all in New York. And at the funeral at the wake, she wrote a note saying, you know, I'll never forgive you, this and that. You may move on. You may find peace or wherever. But wherever you go, just know I will never forgive you. And I hope you burn in hell. Something along that nature. Um, she stuck it in his pocket when she walked to the casket. She, you know, she said no one saw her up there doing it. She just very casually walked up there and slipped it in his, like, front lapel pocket. So fast forward to, let's say maybe like three years, three, four years in the future. No, I'm sorry. She was 17. So fast forward a lot in the future, <laughs> about like a decade. And, and she's in Florida and I'm about like, you know, two years old. And uh, she always felt like someone was like over her shoulder and she worked in the hospital. And there was this Romanian woman who worked there and she was like fresh to the country, you know? Uh, I think she's doing like janitorial service, something like that. But uh, she always like would see, would see my mom, and she would just stare at her, like stare by her shoulder. And my mom was just kind of like look at her, like like what's your deal, you know? And on the fourth time, she walked up to her and was, like introduced herself, and then the woman just like stopped and was like, "Do you know you have a a spirit attached to you?" And she was like, "What?" You know, just didn't even think about it. But she's, you know, then started thinking, like, okay, well, I've always felt like someone, someone's looking over my shoulder. And she's, you know, started talking to this woman. And uh, she goes, yeah. She goes, you are sensitive. You know, you, you know, you did something to this man. He did you wrong. And he said that you left a note in his pocket saying that you will never forgive him. And, uh, you know, that has bounded him to you. And he keeps asking you, baby, please forgive me. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Let me move on. And she said his name was Angelo, which was the stepfather's name. You know, someone that, you know, was in a different country, you know, 10 years ago. Never knew her. Just randomly told her that, all those details. And, uh, you know, so she was shocked and this and that. And uh, ultimately she did, you know, pray and told him, hey, I forgive you. And she said she just felt like this weight lifted off her and him just, like, move on. Um, yeah, wild stuff. And um, so she's always had encounters like that. And she always was interested in that kind of stuff. So that kind of was brought on to me when I was younger. Whenever I would tell her, because when I was little, I always see, like, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, man. It's just so weird. But um, I would see, like, kind of like a distorted electrical distortion somewhat human human shape just kind of like walking through rooms and i would kind of freak out but her having that like experience and knowing that you know paranormal stuff does happen she always like talked me through and this and that and i used to feel things and sense things and more so when i was younger a lot more so when i'm younger but um as i got older and i feel like martial arts in some way like developing my key, let's say Japanese art, kind of mm -hmm. solve that. But um, you, you anyways, key. yeah, I mean, yeah, key, yeah, key is like chi. A lot of people know what chi is because that's the Chinese. But the but key, 
is exactly. actually the Japanese version, just like Kenpo is Chinese, Kempo is Japanese. <clears throat> exactly. Because J- yeah. Japan is actually, they, they are really the same people. They, I'm not yeah. going to get into the history. <laughs> but anyway, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I could talk I about history, but we're not going to do that. I know a lot about <laughs> Japan and China, but. So let me say this. So you, you, your family, you were, you were never really in Brooklyn, though, right? You were just pretty much born in yeah, not Florida. really. I was, I was born in Brooklyn, and I okay. was there when I was like one, and then they they moved out. They already knew they were planning to move to Florida. So yeah. pretty much when I was born, the house was being built basically, and once it was ready, they just moved down there. And um, I'm from <clears throat> Cape Coral, Florida. Um, it was somewhat rural at the time. It was like a newly developed city. Like, back in the day, it was super, you know. I mean, there was a neighborhood we lived in, a big neighborhood, but I'm talking like half the lots were never developed. Yeah. Uh, at that time. Now they're fully developed. It's all, you know. But the interesting part about Cape Coral is they modeled it after Venice, Italy. Mm-hmm. So they built canals. They built more canals and roads in Cape Coral. And it's still that way to this day. So fast forward to when I was uh, – I don't, I don't, like I don't really think so. that's smart, though. I'm going to say this because <laughs> alligators. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if Tons you have a bunch of canals, people aren't going to want to go, hey, let's go to the store and use the canal because you might have a game. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Uh-huh. You'd be surprised. Yeah. My mom. I mean, people will. If, they will. But, I mean, it's just oh, not because yeah. something could happen. We used, and in Venice, you're we used to jump in. Yeah, we used to jump in and swim in there all the time. Oh, and my mom would, uh, yeah. But anytime my mom gets, you know, Italian woman, you know, he'll, he'll have no fear like Italian woman scoring. Crap, man. Um, she would uh, one time she tried chasing me with bread. She would leave like baguettes out to make breadcrumbs for meatballs. Yeah. And uh, at one time I like stole her wooden spoons, right? Thinking I was all slick, like ah, you can't smack my butt. She grabbed that baguette, the baguette, the steel baguette, and started chasing me, man. <laughs> I dove head first in that canal, and she's like, "You big cat back here! Who's out here? gonna kill you? Then I'm gonna beat your butt!" You know, yada yada yada. And then, then I'm gonna beat you <laughs> after your. And I, and I was like, "Screw this! I'll, I'll, I'll beat you some more." Yeah, exactly. Typical Latin, you know, <laughs> family. Yeah. And I was like, I'll take my chance with the alligators, you crazy lady. <laughs> People don't realize, yeah. though, that when they talk about Latino or Latin, I had somebody say, oh, that's anything of Spanish descent. I'm like, no, the original Latins were Italians. And the Italians, right. the, 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 it was a language, which was Latin. And yeah. Spain, the Iberian Peninsula, was one of the first holdings of, of uh, Rome. And that's why. Yeah. And then there's a difference between Spaniard and Spanish, but I'm not going to get into it because I was trying to tell somebody that the other day because they're like, I'm Puerto Rican, I'm Latin. And they were <laughs> talking about an Italian that they went out. She was talking about an Italian that she dated. Yeah. And she's like, he don't know me. I'm Latin. I'm like, so is he. <laughs> you talk- right. Yeah, and in fact, by so. extension, <laughs> you, you said something about Romanians earlier. Romania yep. was actually Latin. It was settled by Italians that were from the peninsula and it was under the Roman rule and it was the last yep. great conquest of Rome. It was called Dacia and it was yeah. full of gold and it was completely looted oh, by yeah. the Roman empire. Yeah. yeah. And so looted the, the, in terms the of penal colony. <laughs> it was, it was, it was yeah. literally an Italian penal colony, kind of like the British used Australia. The yeah. Romans were like, you don't want to behave, eh? Well, go you go in and live in the Romania, and then they that's right. Anyway, yeah, that's a, that's a ridiculous. Yeah, land of no gold. <laughs> There's no gold there, and then no bread. Yeah. You just go in and live. But uh, I had, no, I had they, an argument with a girl. <laughs> There's a girl, my sister's friend, <laughs> who like she liked me, and I wanted to date her, but she's like, you're not the Romanian. I'm like, lady, listen. I'm like. I'm like you're you're basically you know the naughty Italians that got shipped off. <laughs> like we're the same people, <laughs> you know. And she's like, no, no, it has to be Romanian. My mom. And I'm like, oh, did, did you set her straight though? I <laughs> uh, no, she's she. Uh, it was a lost cause. So I just oh, uh, yeah bowed out. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, you know what? no. A lot of it is because of the Romanian. A lot of them are Orthodox because yeah. they they answered to Byzantium at one time, <clears throat> which is the mm. Greek Orthodox side of Rome. Okay. And the Roman Empire was divided into two. So if you would have been Orthodox, you probably would have had a chance. But if you're Catholic, I see that. you know, yeah. because Vlad yeah. the Impaler, who was from Wallachia, which is part of Romania, he was back and forth. The, the Pope, oh, really? you know, absolved him of all his crimes. So he became a Catholic. And then he went back. And really? Like, oh, you're I mad at me? That. Now I'm Orthodox again. I can see that. So whoever I can totally say that. You know, that's what he <laughs> 
<laughs> no, you're gonna let me kill some more Turks? Okay, I'll be a Latin. I'll be whatever. You know, he didn't care. <laughs> That's too funny. Like I never knew that. Nowadays. Yeah, so go, yeah. He's out there go lobbying. To, let's go to the next Sorry. story. So go ahead. Yeah, we're just yeah, yeah. We're just talking here. So this part is you know beginning of the dog man. So I've had like other my more aggressive spiritual encounters came later on in life, but um. So I'm about like, like 10 now, and I've always seen spirits. I've always felt stuff, um, very sensitive to that kind of thing. We, you know, um, I remember like my mom meeting with like friends of friends, like neighborhood friends who had like kids who were like sensitive, and she would talk to them and like help them out with it. So I have like faint memories of that. Um, it's pretty neat. I got to have her call on sometimes. She got some pretty wild stories about my being pregnant with me and all the weird stuff happening. I feel weird talking about her stories because like, I wasn't there, you know? So mm-hmm. um, so at this point, I'm like 10, right? I, I believe I'm around 10. Uh, it should be, uh, my memory's right, it'd be like 2005. Yeah, 2005. And um, so I'm gonna end it, I'm gonna bring this part up because I think it's correlated to the dog man I saw, which I didn't know what that was at the time. Um, I feel horrible for saying this because I'm a big, I'm big into wildlife photography and I love animals, love them to death, big into conservation. Um, I have a bunch myself, but, uh, this is what happened. So back in I was a kid, there was this neighborhood girl, Monique, and we used to always play together. And for whatever reason, I don't know how this even started, but like, we started like, she started like cutting open frogs and stuff like that. And like had me help and it was just like weird man because like i was always a loving kid but like we started doing that and i was you know partook in that so it was just kind of like a weird thing that happened I mean, i'm not proud of it i really didn't want to bring it up on the show but it's part of what happened i kind of wonder if that's what triggered this so and it felt like i don't know like almost evil but you know felt bad energy but well, you, you, you guys you were kids it. right and you were doing this yeah kid? Yeah, yeah, we're doing this kids, bad. man. I mean, you're killing yeah. for no reason. Absolutely. It was horrific. I mean, think about now, like, I'm a huge outdoorsman, hunter. I'm all about ethical kills. And, you know, I could talk forever about how good of a person I am now. But the fact that was, when I was a kid, at that time frame, we were doing that. And, uh, you know, it's the truth. So I guess I guess say it. Um, you know, so we were doing that. And we're throwing like rocks at these ducks, and the ducks I don't feel bad about. These ducks are nasty. Um, you know, was there were Muscovy ducks that had, like acne on their face? They would come on the dock and they would poop on the dock. Cause we lived on the water, and they would chase you and try to bite you. They they would bow up to you. The ducks and the burrowing owls in Florida, those things were like they would whoop our butts. So the ducks I don't feel too much bad about. The frog stuff, yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> but I had like pets, tons of snakes as a kid and everything, so. But anyway, we're doing that kind of stuff. And actually, this happened while we're on the dock, throwing rocks at the ducks. And they were retreating for once. So we were like, yeah, get them. And it was this me, Monique. We're up there slinging these rocks. Because, you know, in Florida, there's no pine straw or mulch beds. Everything's rocks, you know. So we got from the garden bed, you know, the little you know, island area, lawn. And we're checking rocks at these ducks. And it's just me and her back there. And, uh, so we're chucking these rocks, and I look up, and I mean, man, this sounds crazy, but the clouds, I didn't see it form into this shape, but this is just the shape they were when I looked up. It looked like almost a demonic-looking water buffalo, like a bull-dragon mix. And it was, it wasn't like, oh, I can see that. Like, look, No, it was, I mean, damn picture perfect finely detailed and it even had like uh like little puffs of smoke coming out of the nostrils so imagine like a water buffalo right like out there i've been doing some research trying to paint a picture for the audience here imagine like a water buffalo but the horns a little more like straightened outward they still have that curve but it has like that broad nose and the nose had literally had abs on it and the Ooh. eyes are red. I mean, like blood red. And the sky was normal. It was like four o'clock in Florida, bright and sunny. But it almost seemed darker at uh, that time. And uh, 
and it was crazy. But the eyes were fire red, and there was puffs puffs of smoke coming out of the nostril, almost like a pitcher. And it was just looking right at us, massive. I mean, massive in the sky. I mean, just huge, huge. Couldn't miss it. Could not miss it. If you were looking up at that moment, you would have saw it. So I, I grab her and I'm like, Monique, what the hell is that? And you know, we, I would point up and, and we're just like stunned and we're looking at this thing and it just feels like evil. It feels malicious, like just diabolical evil. Just that, you know, I always refer to kind of like a stare down, um, you know, like that. And you feel like you're about to lose, but 10 times worse. It felt just like that. And so we're 10. We do what we do best. We run like hell. <laughs> and we run up because our parents are right there in the kitchen. And we run through the screen door and we go through the sliding door. And we're like, we're both of us are like, mom, 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 come outside. You got to see this. You got to see this. And they're like, okay, okay, you know, whatever, you crazy kids. So they come out. They weren't like, you know, they're just like walking out and we're like dragging them. We're like, come on, come on, hurry, hurry. What, like, what the hell? Is, we saw it. There's a demon in the sky. There's a demon in the sky. And they look up, and it's still there, but it's like, um, it's like you had an extra, uh, extra stretch, and you shook it, where you can see it, but it's like, oh, yeah, oh it's like, a sketch. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right, and it's kind of, but it's like blurred out, you know, mm -hmm. but you can still make out the shape, nowhere near defined as when we first, uh, nowhere even close. And they're like, oh, wow, yeah, that is freaky, it does kind of look like that, doesn't it? And we're like, no, you don't understand. It was like picture perfect. Um, so they were like, oh yeah, whatever. They're kids. So that freaked us out. That stopped us completely from doing bad stuff. And we were uh, at the time I was Catholic, you know, Italian. Um, so we were good little uh, Catholic children after that. But the weird part came like three weeks later. So you know, back then, big neighborhood. It was, the neighborhood was like a big grid pattern. And like I said, like most more, there's more empty lots that were like semi wooded, but you know, it's like Florida. So it's like a couple, you know, maybe like 15 feet of trees by the canal area with like tall grass or some like lower grass, you know, in the lots. So most of the neighborhood was like that, probably like 60%. But the rest of them were houses with kids and you know before computers we were, had a bike and that was like your car so you'd go out all your neighborhood friends we play baseball in the lots or try to build stupid ramps that were like two inches high and jump them with our bikes or razor scooters um so i'm with my friend group they're all the boys right and it's like i don't know like eight or ten of us riding up bikes just hanging out doing you know what boys do and uh one of our friends, I believe his name was Rocco, was really shooken up, like really shooken up. He was—he didn't want to—he didn't want to go mess with the owl, you know, the owls and play baseball, or he didn't want to ride up to the gas station at the end of the neighborhood that we weren't allowed to go to and just look around. He just didn't. He was just quiet. And one of the other kids was like, "Hey, man, like, what's wrong? You, you know, you're acting kind of weird." And he goes, "Man, he goes." Um, he goes, something really freaky has been hanging out my window. And we're like, what? He's like, it's a Pokemon. And, you know, back in, like, you know, early 2000s, Pokemon was really big. We all had Pokemon cards, right? So he said a Pokemon was hanging outside his window. And, you know, of course, we're kids, so we're like, well, what kind of Pokemon was it? It's really weird. And it was one of the ghost ones. It was, uh, I believe it was Haunter. Haunter or the gender gender one but if you look up like the old school pokemon i believe it was haunter and if you look that like, up are you talking about like the the little purple ghost looking one yeah yeah there's yeah, like yeah. there was like three right and the two were like physical and one yeah, was like, like a one gas. of them is like a little black ball with a face and like a th uh, like a, a th like a gas cloud around them and, the, and yeah. the other one's like a little fat purple dude with, a, with yeah. a big grin on his face and yeah, yeah Hunter is the yeah. one that's like flying and he has his hands right in front of him. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Okay, so that's what he saw outside his window. Yeah, I believe he said it was Haunter. And we we're like, whoa, okay. that's weird. And you know, me, <laughs> you know, 
the only, you know, being involved with ghosts, I was like, oh, dude, maybe it's a ghost. And I was like, we saw a demon earlier. So once, you know, that's only me and Monique saw a demon in the clouds. And that kind of opened him up. And he started talking more about it. And he goes, yeah, man. He goes, it keeps coming up on my window every night. And I'm really scared. And he's like, I, I can't uh. sleep. And he goes, every time my mom comes in, my parents, I call for them. He's like, as soon as I come in, he goes away. And he goes, I'm like, what does he look like? Oh, like and he's like, he's like Haunter. He's got, got red glowing eyes. He has teeth, big smile. And he has the, the spiky. He has like a, two big spikes on the side. And we're like, whoa, Ooh. okay. So, you know, it's 2005. And I was in the paranormal stuff. So were other kids, too. Because we always saw on the news, Jubacabras. You know, there were Jubacabra reportings in Florida now at that time. So we were all like, dude, it's got to be a Jubacabra. So, you know, we start, you know, playing to hunt the Jubacabra. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else would you do when, you know, your parents are turning loose and you're a wild, flirty, and, you know, young flirty man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, start looking for the Jubacabra over the course of like a week or so. And I was... You know, I had an interest in photography and videography. So my parents gave me their old um, tape, uh, tape recorder. It was like one of those older ones that had like the mini VHSs in it, right? Because oh, they just yeah. got like a, yeah. So they, they just got the digital, they got the one with the little CDs in it. So they're like, hey, you can have this and you can make movies and all this stuff with it. So I was like, I have a camera. And they're like, oh, heck yeah. <laughs> so we went all into lots looking around and stuff. And, uh, if you ever lived in South Florida, you're going to know exactly what this is. They're like these, <laughs> these things are demonic in themselves, man. They're like these two foot tall, or like a foot tall owl. And they, don't, they, they can fly, but they don't really like flying, kind of like a turkey. And they uh -huh. burrow in the ground. And when you step near their nest, they come at you and attack you. They'll chase you and someone fly and literally attack you. They're like our arch nemesis as kids. Because, you know, we just want to play in the lots, man. These owls come up and start juking us, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, my little um, sister got, got got bit by a by a goose when she was when she was a kid in, in, in oh, the really? park where, where there was, like, all these geese and ducks, and she's hated geese ever since. Yeah. So, it, yeah. It just, birds have really <laughs> yeah, are, they're mean. They're pretty terrible. Yeah, birds get nasty, man. People don't know that. Yeah. Yeah, geese are wild animals. They, they don't back down. It's like a honey badger. It's insane. Yeah, I'll fight a goose any day. I don't care. Yeah. No qualms. Yeah, about that. catch his hands. <laughs> yeah, dude. probably your feet. Yeah, you know, yeah. Kick that thing in the neck. I don't care. Yeah, you know I'll take on one piece. Flock the. I don't want to mess with flock. That's a demon. <laughs> yeah, they are. It's honker. Those. Yeah. Honker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we all started looking for this thing. Of course, shocker, no luck. Um, so one day, you know, I, I went out on my own. And I had my video camera with me, and I went by this corner lot. So most, like, good bit of the houses in the neighborhood were on canals. So later we kind of cut inward and outward. I mean, you can probably pull up on Google Maps and see what I'm talking about. But um, so I was by a, a lot with a canal on it. And this lot had a lot more trees than usual on it. It was a corner lot, and I'll say the trees probably went back good, like, eh, I don't know, 20 yards? About that, maybe less, maybe like 15 yards to the canal. So it was like the most wooded lot in the neighborhood. So I just ride my bike there, and it's about, man, I'm not too sure of the time, but it was bright daylight. And I'm just walking around, I'm filming, and I'm just, you know, I got my bike laid down in the dirt, I'm just walking around the lot, and I'm filming. And uh, I, I feel like a pressure. Like my, my back is faced away from the trees, right? I'm just kind of like filming, just talking, whatever. And I feel like a pressure. Some like instincts, like look behind you right now. And I turn around and there's this giant thing. It's tan in color and it has some white on the chest. And it's like when it saw me, it was like, oh, you got me. And it, me like a bullet just took off. Like I saw it and then it just boom, took off, left a huge sand, like dust cloud. And I see its head hit a branch. And I was like, you know, like, you know, kid cursing, you know, like, oh my God, what, what was that? What was that? You know, I was like freaking out. And I was like, you know, my heart was racing. I didn't run. 
because I just saw it and I was like, what the heck was that thing? And I was, was like, was that the chupacabra? Like a, what, was it shaped like an animal or a person? It was, well, in my mind, it was, it was kind of both, which was weird. It had the hotch legs. It was super tall. Um, tan, tan fur. It was lean. It was muscular, but lean. Kind of like more so than a runner, but like someone who worked out, but they weren't yeah. like bulky, you know, they're not like, you know, not like Wolf over there benching like, you know, five, six hundred pounds. They're doing more like you know, threes, you know, but they're fit. And yeah. it was about sleek. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like a nice like athletic look. Um, and I think it had a tail. That I've been trying to think about that if it did or not. Um, but it just shot off. And, you know, I was like, whoa, like it's harvest racing. I kind of freaked out. I stepped back a little bit. And I see that branch that it hit with his head shaking. And I remember that because later on, you know, well, I'll wait till I get to that. But so I'm freaking out and I start looking for tracks. And I see kind of like, like three toed dog print. With like a circular indent about, I've never measured this. I want to say it's about like some weird, like 17 inches back or something like that. 19 inches back, there was like a ball, like a heel imprint. And I was like, this thing is massive. And I was like, is this, this must be the Jubacabra. So I get my, my friends over and they just take their dad's measuring tape. And they measure that branch and it was seven foot nine inches. And they're like, that's way too big to be Jubacabra. And I'm describing what it looked like. And I said, you know, it had like, you know, that forward, like the backward facing knee. Mm-hmm. It was lean. It had long arms, kind of like a claw hand. And it had kind of like a muzzle, like a muzzle face with long ears. But you said the footprint it, was, it was a three-toed footprint? Yeah, I do remember that. It was three-toed. And then like 17 or 19 inches back, there was like a circular indent. So I don't know if that was like the Hodge coming down and just springing off like a bullet or or what that was. But I remember it was consistent. I think we saw two or three tracks. I filmed the tracks, but you know where that tape is, God only knows. Um, and you don't even you just see a dust cloud on the film. I remember rewatching that like multiple times. And I played it for them. They're just like, whoa, okay, that happened. So none of us knew what a dog man was. Uh, we didn't. We never even really saw werewolf movies back then. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's not like our parents would rent that for us at Blockbuster. Had no internet. Hmm. Not really. That I can remember. I don't remember going in and on the internet in Florida. So we're just like, you know, they're like, it can't be that tall. It can't be that tall. And I'm like, look, look in the film. You see that branch shaking. And they're like, yeah. Like Maybe it's like a really tall Jupacabra, you know? And, <laughs> you know, so that was it. But looking back... You know, what my friend Rocco was describing, you know, when it had like two spikes on his head, red glowing eyes and a big grin on his face with claw hands on the windowsill, matched up to a dog man. Yeah. And, um, you know, and what I saw definitely was a freaking dog man. And I didn't realize this until, and this is part of it too, because that was the physical encounter I had. Fast forward to 2019, beginning of 2019, well, 2018, I had a bad accident at work. I had a piece of uh, equipment that was secured by someone else fall on top of me and basically I ripped my foot out of a pipe. So I was out of commission for like a year or so with rehab and, you know, pins in my, my foot and all that. So I was just hanging out at the house most of the time, just doing my college work, homework. Um, online courses and etc. So I did like an apprenticeship program basically. So I went through trade school that was accredited and then I got my degree after that. So I was able to finish that school basically right when the accident happened. So that was good. Um, so I had my own house at the time. I was making good money. I was, in, you know, I was, like, four, I was like a fifth year apprentice making good money. So I've been in my house for a couple of years at that time. I had roommates. Well, run roommate. And then uh, after my accident, you know, workers comp, you get paid less money. And I'm like, well, this sucks. Um, so I had a bright idea. I was like, well, I'll do Airbnb. I got like, you know, two extra bedrooms in my house, apart from the one I'm renting out and the one I'm living in. So I started doing that. And um, I started getting to like Bigfoot, 
you know, YouTube channels and listening to that because I knew what Bigfoot was and uh, ghost stories, stuff like that. And then, um, you know, he who shall not be named, YouTube channel popped up. I started listening to that. And I had like an odd attraction to it. Like it really drew me in. And I had all this free time on my hands because I was just doing homework and just laying around the house or, you know, try my hand a little online dating action for some, uh, you know, well, I had the sympathy card going for me, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> which worked really well. Unless she's Romanian, I, that's, then it's like, no, you're not. Sure. Yeah, if it's Romanian, you're, yeah, there's no go. Yeah. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, that was surprisingly. Blood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not a pure blood, man. Not a not gangster enough. To kick that out of Rome. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you a question oh, before you go yeah. on. I want yeah. to say something about. <clears throat> I want to say something about the chupacabra thing. My voice yeah. is trying to go out, but but th- that's good. that's a that's a very common thing. People will is say, it? "Oh, you saw something that looked like a chupacabra." Like I'll I'll say something about what I saw, and if yeah. I don't tell, if I don't say dog man or preface it with like I saw a werewolf, they'll they'll, they'll say it's a chupacabra. Yeah, I'm not joking. I don't know what that I, is, but it's just I think that, that this, just. I think this is mainstream. I don't know if it's like because you know, in Spanish, mm-hmm. I know like you've mentioned before, it, that's like catch all for monster. It is. Yeah, which I had a lot of Spanish, you know, kids, friends growing up in Florida. I don't know why they say chupacabra now because when I was a so kid, weird. nobody was saying chupacabra; they were saying cucuy. Like really? uh, Cucuy, you know, like oh, a yeah. mon- like Cucuy is a yeah. monstro, you know, Cucuy, you know, or, or Fantasmo Diablo, you know, things like that. But they didn't say like, well, you saw a Chupacabra. But in the last 20 years, everything is a damn Chupacabra. I think it was just the, the news. I think when the news started picking it up yeah. and became like a household term, I mm. think maybe, you know, Spanish culture just kind of adopted Chupacabra as, you know, Cucuy because everyone knew what Chupacabra was. It was kind of like Bigfoot. Once they started having this... Um, chicken to show up in florida and texas you know became like a real story i remember new the news is uh, news is, the news stations picking up and talking about it on tv that's how we found out about it and we were stoked we're like what the spiky alien dudes run around like heck yeah dude <laughs> we want to catch this guy you know we had tons of exotic pets <laughs> in florida so many so many um I had a cops call me as a kid because i brought my uh, six foot ball python mm-hmm. to a playground <laughs> oh my gosh yeah, when I was a kid, you know, my mom let me do it. And the cop showed up, Puerto Rican <laughs> cop, started yelling at me. Italian mother shows up, which apparently outclasses Puerto Rican cop. And made, and the cop left, walked away. She's like, whatever. And, uh, yeah, it was great. <laughs> um, but, yeah, yeah, so that was wild. <clears throat> so when I was you – know, this is me in Georgia, too, by the way. I'm keeping up with the storyline here. But I moved to Florida from Georgia, from Florida to Georgia when I was like 13 years old, 12, 13 years old, came to Georgia. And at this point in my life, in 2019, I am, I would be 24. Yeah, I'm 28. I'll be 24. Wow. So, um, Ristol yeah, I didn't have says a whole... the Puerto Rican chupacabra is still something com- entirely different from the reports from the southwest of Mexico. That's not true. Um, not going to argue yeah, exactly. with you, Ristol. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah. really <clears throat> there's there's two different things going on. One is a canid looking creature, which is what we call a blue dog. I don't call that a chupacabra. The chupacabra, yeah. though, I've talked about this on the show, Ristol. Th- 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 there is a type of creature that is the same as you see in Puerto Rico. You find them in the Dominican Republic. You find them in Cuba. Uh, let's see, they're Cuba. You find them in in Honduras. You find them in Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, United States. I, I kid you not. And and a lot yeah. of the theory is through drug dealers. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to say that we can talk about that later, though. But go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah, I just wanted no, to point you... that out while it was up there on the screen. Yeah. No, you're good. Cause I can't see. I don't have the live <clears> chat going. So I'm on the phone, obviously. But no, yeah. I. Um, also, to add credence to that, as a kid, I remember sketches that witnesses would give of what killed their chickens. And it was the same, like, very, very similar. It was a spiky, spines on the back, big eyes, small, you know, hopping creature. Because that's, that's how we learned what it was. We never, I don't remember this dog thing showing up till like, I don't know, maybe like 2012, 2014. People started calling that the Jubacabra in Texas. 
But in Florida, it always has been like the alien creature. That's mm-hmm. just what people reported anyway. So what I remember yeah. on the news, you know, because that's how I knew it was from the, the Cubans news. brought it in from what everybody told me. There was a Cuban cop. He's a former cop, you know, that used to live in Miami, but <clears throat> he, he worked as a police officer in another town, but he lived in Miami for a long time. Yeah, that's And common. he said that the reports they were getting were weird. Like people were seeing them in the city, like inside really? their houses and stuff. Oh, it's freaky. Yeah. But he lived he worked in the county, one of the counties out there. But yeah. I need to talk yeah, to Albert I... Rosales. He lives over there. He's a Cuban and he he's he's written a bunch of stuff. Albert I can tell I'd probably tell you more about it. Oh wow. That'd be interesting, yeah. Though he was kind of like a mysterious creature, you know, even just hearing about it now, you don't hear too many good stories. You no, know, the stories you've covered on your channel have been pretty um, pretty fascinating to listen to. It makes a lot of sense too, but cartels, because cartels are wild, man. Like they got so much money, you know, like like Scarface, but like it's true. Like they have so much money, it means nothing to them. So they just want to do wild stuff with it. Well, go, and go the black watch market. Narcos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They called it Lord of the Skies. What was his name? Oh, uh, what was that guy's name? Um, if you look him up, but anyway, What's like he, that's a true that? story. When he crashed that plane. He just left yeah. it there. He was like, "Why do I care?" The the, the, the narco's would just fly in. Amado Fuentes. That's Amado, that Amado, Amado. And then the other one is uh, the one that's that's is what is his name? Amayo. That's the one that was working out of uh, Guadalajara. But this guy, Lord of the Skies, uh, uh, Amado, he was the one from uh, Juarez. But but he hmm. would crash the plane. Like he would talk about like how he would crash the plane. Yeah. And he would just leave it there. I mean, and then you just go buy another one. Like, these these yeah. planes aren't cheap, man. I mean, they're buying, like, big planes, jets, yeah. you know, and then they would just crash them into the jungle and then pff, whatever. Yeah. Walk away uh, from it or just leave it there, you know? Yeah. I mean, hell, I mean, in Florida, like, I remember uh, one of the neighbors talking about to my dad about, you know, all the, you know, the, like, so many duffel bags of money and drugs that they just don't care. They see the cops going after it because they would call it a Florida grouper over the radio. And that was mm-hmm. like code for, you know, one of the narco guys has dropped something in the ocean for one of the speedboats to pick up, right? So when they see the cops going for it, they're like, eh, who cares? And they just kind of let it go. But if the cops don't find that bag and wash up on the beach, people would always talk about finding, you know, you see in the news, like some reported they found a giant bag full of money, you know, mm-hmm. or drugs all the time, you know. Cocaine all the time. Yeah. Cocaine every time. You hear about yeah. it, they'd be like alligators dead on the on the beach who would just because they would eat it. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. see a splash and yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. you know, their nature's uh garbage disposal. Like yeah, them and tiger sharks. Then and then the waters around there are just tigers, full yeah. of bull sharks too. That's another animal so many. that you don't want to there's so many of them in those canals. And they're so freshwater. Many. Yeah. 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 They can like you say, go they can go all the way up. They can change their, um, they can hold on to that salt and just, you know, just live in freshwater and even right. procreate too. That, that, they come into the freshwater because larger sharks like tigers and, and great whites, they, they don't have to compete with them. Right. So, the, the, but the only thing is they, they have to compete with crocodiles and alligators. Now, something people don't know too, Florida has its own crocodile. The North yep. American crocodile, yeah, they have crocodiles, and they're a yes, lot sir. more aggressive, and and they can be they very are. nasty. The Cuban crocodile is a very nasty creature too. Yeah, they um, have I knew Niles a narco there. that Niles had one. They had a oh, crocodile. Really? Oh yeah, I mean I didn't see it it's like that, you know, but I saw pictures of it, and we were at the bar, and this guy comes in there, and we his nickname we called him Wheeljack. That was his nickname, um, <laughs> but he he drove this like sick looking like car it was like a, it was like a delorean it was a really cool car and he souped it up and it kind of looked like the autobot from the transformer so squid started yeah. calling him that and That's i hilarious. know my brother if, if he's in the chat didn't you need to tell him too to get in here him and score can tell you man it was like a really cool car and his buddy had a car that was like his but it was a lamborghini it was yellow and we called him sunstreaker from the transformers <laughs> Nice. and they were cubans and th- this dude showed us pictures of this enclosure that he had he had a crocodile. He had a Cuban crocodile. Like, literally, he smuggled wow. it out of Cuba. And these were That's narcos. Hilarious. These guys just had money. Like, they would just throw hundreds of dollars at the bartenders. Like, here, you know, whatever. Go to another yeah. bar and do the same thing. Do a shot and just give $100 tips. Yeah. It was like an endless supply of money. I mean, it was yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, had no meaning to them. Had no meaning to them. No meaning to them whatsoever. Nothing yeah. at all. Nothing. Yeah. 
It's yeah, they invited crazy me to, to a birthday them. party, and that's how I found out. I didn't really know exactly. <laughs> kind of had a suspicion, but I went to a birthday party, and they were like handing out like like party gifts. It was grown up birthday party, but yeah, they were yeah, handing yeah. out like tennis bracelets and just crazy stuff. Like I, mean, I don't remember it was in the nineties, and they were handing out like watches. Yeah, and I remember the watches being like you know thousand dollar watches. And they yeah, were, they were like in the gift bags. Like, go get you a gift bag off the table. <laughs> And That's I go insane. over there and I grab a gift bag. I'm like, okay. I thought, you know, it might be something, a gift card to Steakhouse or something, you know. No, right, there's right. a wall. There's a, yeah. Everything was just <laughs> unbelievable. That's crazy. And then I was kind of like sitting there nervous. I was like, okay, I hope the door doesn't come flying open while I'm sitting here. Right. You know, they're Associating like, you, what are you with... doing here? I'm like, I just sharpened my pencil. Be like, uh, what's his name? <laughs> the moving. What's his name? Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor gets the job. And then they come in and they, the FBI closes it down on his first day. They're like, who are you? He's like, I just sharpened my pencil. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah. But anyway, go uh, ahead. Sorry funny. about that. Yeah, no, you're good. Like I was going to say, back that up, I remember having a friend, a uh, really good, good friend of mine when I was a kid in Florida, and his mom didn't work. The dad didn't work. <laughs> they had a speedboat that they would race competitively in Miami. Oh, like, we were on the West Coast, right? But they would go yeah. to Miami and bring the boat. Uh, no, actually, I think it was it was it was a like moored off there in Miami, and he would race. I didn't think anything of his kid. I was like, "Oh, your dad's awesome, dude. He's a speedboat driver. That's awesome." They were uh, mm. they were like uh, Millie, They were like Eastern European and, and Cuban, and uh, I want to say the dad's side was Cuban, and uh, <laughs> the family had like this massive farm. I don't even remember where it was, but they had like all these four wheelers, nice truck, nice nice truck. I remember everything being nice. And uh, they wouldn't let me do anything. They were like, you would sue us. So my friend would get to ride the dirt bikes for like 15 minutes and then come play with me. But uh, like now I'm older. I'm like, huh, that's really suspicious. And I always said, like, what would you, your dad do? And he's like, oh, I don't know. He's just, you know, they have money. And I was like, that's cool, dude. You know, so I'm like, we didn't question him. <laughs> they have yeah. money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They just, they just have yeah. money. It's in the family. You know, so I was, yeah. I'm Italian. I think I knew not to question it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I knew some Italians too, back in the day. I mean, there was a lot yeah. of different people doing a lot of different things and uh, really easy to get caught up in something. And I used to think, yeah. you know, there was a Too lot easy. of people that were doing things and they, they would be doing whatever they did. And I didn't ask questions and I didn't want to know. I no. was just like, yeah. you know what, dude, I'm not bothering with this person. I'm not going to ask him anything. When you no. run nightclubs, you know, you get every kind of type of stripe of person in there. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody exactly. drives up and they're, and they're driving like a, uh, you know, they get they get like a Hummer limo and they're dro getting dropped off. And, you know, you can yeah. rent one of those, but they're like, no, it's mine. You know, right. and then they prove it to you that that's, yeah. you know, they're, that's they're traveling that way. And it's like one of many other different vehicles they have. And mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. I knew deal. a guy who had 15 vehicles at one time. And um, yeah, he was all like, "Yeah, I'm an entrepreneur." I'm like, "I bet you are." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, like, loose, Whatever, loose terms dude. right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's a wild life out there, man. It's crazy. Um, apart from the mundane, it is. It's like the paranormal. It's uh, reality is stranger than fiction. Yeah, when when you were yeah. living in Florida and you were a kid, you said that you know back in when you were young. I mean, you were you were young, like, like yeah. early two thousands probably. Yeah, exactly. I think I'm that one. Oh eight, oh nine. Yeah, when, when were you you born? Like in the mid nineties. Yeah, ninety five. Ninety five. Yeah, you're young, you're older than my my nephew Zane. So you you oh, went yeah. through like by the time you were like you were a little baby when I was working at these clubs and, and dealing with these people. It was still going on by the time you were older too. I mean, I'm sure because yeah. money is what it is. Yeah. But there was a there was a a, a steep decline in certain types of, of narcotics and i'm going to say this every generation had its own drug you know that there was like very like the police were like hey we got to stop this we got to get right. this off the street now it's fentanyl but and, and then of course y'all generation yeah. was like meth and then before it was cocaine these yeah. people that were doing all these things you know, it was like <clears throat> there were always other things around, but that was the main thing. And there, everybody seems to go and, like, jump in there and do whatever it is that they're doing. And then yeah. all these people get put behind bars for doing what they do. And then they're all like, well, everybody was doing it, but you got caught. 
Exactly. You know, and that that's the big thing. And then they, they, they're all upset because they got caught. But I knew a yeah. lot of knuckleheads that would get out and then they would just go right back and do the same crap. And you're like, dude, try something different. Try working a legitimate job. <laughs> right. you know? But they don't how understand do you do that? Time yeah, how do you yeah. do that if you're used to making $100,000 a month? How do you go, yeah. oh, I'm going to go work a job? That's, that's the trap. That's the trap that's right. right there. So, so it never get you. started. That's the, the, the lesson there, kids. I'm going to tell you right now. Never get started. Yeah. Don't ever start doing any of that. Because then also, if you and if you were to live 40, 50 years as a rich person, the reward at the end of the road is going to hell. Right. So that's the exactly. truth. Exactly. You know? It corrupts, anyway, I'm sorry, corrupts more than this. Yeah, no, it corrupts more mm-hmm. than just, you know, even if you financially get away with it, it's still, I mean, for, even if you have all the riches in the world, man, it's so hard to make a, uh, you know, to stay a good person even – if everything's on the quote unquote up and up, right? You can't. I mean, it would just, there's really no, no way. You can't. You can't. Because you don't respect no. it. It was too easy. And, you yeah. know, you feel like, oh, I'm a god. I'm invincible. And then you get got. <laughs> and then That's it's all right. over. And, and then when you fumble, then you're like, oh, man, I screwed up. You know, and there yeah. are people now doing time that got caught back in the 80s and they're still in there. And That's they'll insane. never get out. Yeah. Because they just I, couldn't stop. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I've had a. I know of people who they're really good at it for a while, but they always they always get caught. And it's like, you know what? I'm a very adventurous person. I like traveling to different countries. I like uh, doing a lot of scuba diving and all, you know, all that stuff. And it's like, you know what? I just value my freedom too much to risk that. Mm-hmm. That I'd rather just be dead. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's not. <clears throat> so, you know, it's a decision everyone's going to make. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad you made the decision to become, do something with yourself and not just get fall into that trap because living where yeah. you lived and growing up the way you did, you could have easily gone into that. And I, I had some friends, Very one easy. of my friends is straight up Paisan and, and he did a lot of time. Yeah. And he's, he regrets it. I mean, his son grew up while he was in there. That's, yeah. He comes out I and mean, his son don't even know who he is. Yeah. You know, and it's like my family, you know, growing up in New York, you know, fresh immigrants, I mean. I got stories about, you know, them with the Gambinos and this and that. And it's like, you know, my father was like, he saw his cousin get basically murdered because he was, he, his cousin was screwing around with a mafioso's wife. And uh, he found out, was not too happy, and mm-hmm. basically crippled them mentally and physically. So he saw that and he's like, you know what? Yeah, I think I'll get a job in HVAC and just kind of move to Florida. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's it's wild, man. Yeah, and I just want to wild. say this while we're talking about this subject. There is no glorification of it here. You know, I know that there are people no. who've done things and did things, and I'm not judging them. That's their life. They chose to do that. <clears throat> I chose to not be that way. Um, that's my choice. Yeah. You know, I just saw too – I'm like you. I valued my freedom too much. Right. And, you know, when you're on when you're on that fast track or whatever, you think, oh, the good times will never end. No, it does. It always oh, yeah. does. I've never met anybody that it didn't end in either death or in jail or their yeah. life up, up into their life in some way. There's yep. always a price to pay for that. And when you yep. when you get far enough into whatever it is you're doing, whatever bad thing it is you're doing, there has to come a point when you say, I can't do this anymore. And if right. you can't stop, the, the, the worst thing is not jail. The worst thing is when yeah. you die. That's when the right. real, the, the, then that's when you're going to have to pay. Right. Because you're not coming out that clean. People really understand not, that. Yeah. You don't have that protection and security and reputation because you were, you know, handing out Bibles with every dime bag. It's because, uh, you know, you made yourself known for to not be so nice. And then it's all fucking dory now. But it's like uh, there's taxes in the real life and there's taxes in the afterlife. <laughs> and, uh, you got to pay the bill at the end. Mm-hmm. I got a really, got a really judge. bad story from somebody who was a former mafia. I mean, this guy was into a lot of bad stuff, and I knew the guy personally. This is not somebody that just called me up and said, hey, I got a story. And no, I know this guy. And I'm trying to get him to tell his story. He's a little apprehensive, he's, you know, because it, it's like you said, it's kind of nerve wracking. And yeah. I don't know. I think he thinks he's going to get in trouble. But I told him, I said, dude, you can use an alias. It's not like you have to. But he has a near-death experience, and I think everybody needs to hear it. I want him to tell it. But if he won't, I'll eventually tell it. But yeah. 
it's very powerful coming from him. And I think wow. that he needs to tell his testimony because he saw hell. And it wow. was like such a weird, like quick thing. Like he was just, I'll tell you a little bit, but he was driving way too, he was, he was in the passenger seat way too fast of a sports car. They flipped the car and his brother and his friend died. He lives, but he died temporarily. Oh, he wow. saw hell and he saw his brother and his best friend get drugged to hell. And he, he remembers the scream, the smell of the, the sulfur, everything, dude. And this guy, when he told me that, dude, I was like, it was hair on the back of my neck. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, he was telling me. Yeah. I said, geez, Louise, dude, this is this is crazy. You know, and he was like, he goes, Wolf, I him, he calls me Wolf. And yeah. he was telling me and a couple of my friends back in the day. And he was like, dude, this is not a joke. And I was like, I don't think it is. You know, I'm like, I'm listening. Yeah. And since I started my show, I've asked him a couple times, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah," but I don't know if he's gonna do it. I'm just like, eventually. It's intimate. It's intimate. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, it's. I mean, you know, we're we're all men, right? Here, and you know, here, right? So we we know what it's like to be, you know, macho and be tough, and but when you have to open up the most like vulnerable thing, like I don't even, dude, no one else knows the story about mm -hmm. the dog man in Florida and the one in Georgia. I'm about to tell. Uh, it, because I just I would sound nuts like I'm I'm I have a great job, I, you know I got my house really young I bought my house at like 21. Everyone in my circle, and my my friends' parents are like, yeah, you know, he's doing it right in life. And it's like, start telling some crazy stories, <laughs> you know. Everyone, everyone's heard a ghost. Everyone's seen Ghostbusters. Uh, it's not like the whole, you know, dog man or it was just such a stupid name, you know, werewolf thing is mm -hmm. like well no like bigfoot so i just keep my i just keep my mouth shut and uh never told any girlfriends about this never told my mother about it because as a kid i was just like some big animal tried to get me but as i get older and uh i go on the story in georgia it's like oh no it's like once i knew what it was i don't know you all y'all you'll hear when i talk about it it's just it's different, man. It's it is physical and it's spiritual and it has uh, the things that we know about um, rare protection or the use of you know key and stuff like that. These things are well more advanced than we are with that stuff. I mean, just mm -hmm. the way they can throw that. I call it high key around, just because it's not my. There's times I've had experienced it before. Um, it's just insane. We're totally different level. You know, so uh, yeah, it's just weird. And and when it's when you don't understand it, how the hell can you explain it to someone else? Not sounding crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I've been a listener for you know, different channels. Like uh, I used to listen to uh, you know Swamp Thing and you know you know who and a couple others, and I never really had desire to come on and speak because it's like a why would I? B they're all sticking to a one set script and I don't fit that script really because I feel like these other things were part of it. And it's like, well, if they think I'm nuts, then I have no hope. <laughs> so it's like, what's the point? You know? Um, Cause you don't want to be made fun of. You don't want to feel, you know, that's the worst thing for a man to open up and then just, you know, like, yeah, yeah, but don't worry. You know, it's like, okay, thanks. That really didn't help, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I'm just kind of sitting here, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. It's a weird thing. And if you guys listening right now, sorry for mumbling on about stuff other than the story to get back to. But no, no, no. It, just, I know you just, it, I, cause I know you're apprehensive about it. So I'm trying to put you at ease, but yeah, um, take your time. Yeah. No, it's just like, if you don't, if you don't have a crazy story, you don't like really get it to get on and talk about it. It's just, it is an emotional roller coaster in a way, but you know, I love your show Wolf and uh, you guys are doing awesome. And I figured, Hey man, I like this guy a lot. I like what he's doing. I'm going to step up and you know, hopefully contribute to what you guys are doing. Cause I believe in what you're doing, you know, that's that. But uh, it. yeah, man, absolutely. Your whole team, man. You guys rock. You know, Cremo's rise to the top. 
Um, Thank you. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'll get back to the story so everyone stops being bored. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, I, I know what it is because you're feeling that. And I've heard it before because you told me, but you, you were very. Yeah. It was very, you know. But you you had a lot of trepidation even then, so I can understand. Yeah. You know, and you told the yeah. first encounter about about these things, and I get it. But um, yeah, just take your time when you feel ready. You know. Okay. And, and then everybody, there's people that can roll off their story, and like I know that there, something happened to them. They believe right. that it happened to them, and they can tell it like it's you know. And then they'll have a friend or somebody who will will uh, vouch for them, you know. And, and I, their friend is not even the person that it was the full focus of. And it could take them 30 minutes to tell something that the other person told me in five. It just, That's everybody's crazy. different, man. Everybody's different. And you have to know who you're talking to. When you're talking to somebody, I don't ever pressure them. I don't. The people yeah. who were accusing me of that back in the day, oh, he pressures people to tell. No, I don't. No. No, I do not. I not do go all. out and try to get stories. And I, I reached out to a couple people just a couple of days ago because they had some pretty incredible Bigfoot encounters. And one guy was like, oh, that's all you care about is getting people's stories. No, I, I have a show, and I have to try to get people's stories because that's a big component of the show. But I'm not going to pressure or force anybody to say or do anything that's not something they want to do. You're not going to hear people complaining about that because I don't do that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So you exactly. were wanting to talk and tell it, and I said, hey, I can tell your story. This is what I said to you. Or you could tell it. And you said, you know what? I'm going to try and tell it. And I said, okay, let's do it. So Heck it's yeah. your choice. Okay. Yes, if you sir. feel comfortable doing it, I can. You can do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm good. I'm good. So we'll go ahead and move forward. Um, so I'm in my house, 24, working on my college stuff now. I'm doing like the art classes, all the other you know fun fun stuff. So I got all this free time on my hands, and you know YouTube recommends you know you know the Dogman Encounters. So I'm listening mm -hmm. to that, and I'm hooked. I am like so intrigued and i'm like oddly intrigued i noticed it in myself i'm like i'm like why am i so fascinated by this thing I'm like so peculiar and like pardon not gonna lie pardon me i'm i spent eight years training and studying and fighting martial arts um there a couple of fights you know wild bills around here in huntsville uh it was always good times going up there but uh you know, mainly in japanese arts jutsu boxing uh, so judo, Akita, some Akita, but it's like, I don't know, it's like less, you see, in my opinion. But. So I'm aware of what key is and I'm aware of what a stare down is, right? And for people who haven't fought, when you see people square off in MMA, right, and they, they square off, they're trying to throw that malicious intent at each other to see who breaks first. And that's like really the first fight in a ticket. So, all this being said, I would go outside and I would smoke like these little miniature cigars. I would hobble outside because painkillers did not work for me at all. My body just hates it. Um, so, I'm outside smoking my cigar, listening to Dogman stories. And he talks about one about a beige one in Florida, like a tan color one. And I am like locked in. And everything starts clicking. I get a flood back of the memory in Florida. And I'm like, no way, no freaking way, no way. He's describing it, and the height was kind of the same. It was like he said, you know, almost eight eight feet, and I was like, no way. It was just like like an epiphany. And now I'm really intrigued, right? So I'm really diving into this stuff, just listening, not commenting, not going, asking for questions on Facebook, you know, just listening, right? Um, and so I found you, by the way. And we start your channel, but uh, I started noticing the more I was listening come fall, I just started getting that pressure again, that really intense, like predatory, like malicious energy being thrown at me outside, and my dogs would react to it. And where I live in Georgia, it's like, yeah, it's not a, it's like the country ish, urban country, but if you go up further. There's hunting lands and WMAs that run all the way back up to the Smokies, right? And, um, you know, so I'm, I'm like, what the hell is this thing? And I'm like, could it be a dog man? It's like, there's no way. Why would I sense it? I would see something or hear something. 
So I have a guy staying in my bedroom at the front, facing the house. It's the front right window. So I'm thinking all this in my head, and, you know, I'm like a closet dog, my listener. So I'm just, you know, got headphones in when I listen to it. I'm in my room with headphones. No one in my house knows I'm listening to this stuff. And it's an older guy who's staying with me. And, uh, you know, my, my dogs are not liking to be outside at all. They are, like, they are by my feet, guarding me, looking outward, hair full erect, just looking, like they're looking at something in the woods. And I got, like, I'm on, like, probably, like, an like acre and a half or so. And it's a pretty wooded neighborhood. Like I said, runs up to more woods and then so on and so forth. So I'm kind of wondering, is like, it a bear? But, like, no, I wouldn't feel it's, like, a malicious intent towards me. It's just from an animal. I've been around bears. I'm a big backpacker. I've spent time in Cahutta all the time. And, you know, it's just not what this is. So then my... uh Every bee guy comes in the door, right? I'm in the kitchen. I'm thinking about this. He comes running the door. And it's like, dude. And he's an older guy, probably like, like 60s, 70s. He's been in good shape. And he's like, you know, kind of shook. And I'm like, you okay? He's like, man, he goes, you got a big dog outside, man. He goes, does, does he stay outside the fence or, or what? And I'm like, well, no. I just have these two dogs here. Oh, this is Cody. My dogs are like, you know, 80 pound dogs. Nothing too crazy. And I'm like, well, how big was this thing? He's like, he's like, he's about like six of those dogs. I was like, yeah, dude, I do not have a dog that big. So the area he was talking about, he pulls in the driveway and about 12 feet to your left, I have a big natural um, briar of like uh, blackberries, right? They're pretty tall. I'll say about like six feet or so. And he goes, I came out of my car, and I looked over, and there's this big black dog, like a German Shepherd, with his paws on top of, with his, like, you know, he said it looked like paws stretch really far outward into the black bears, and he was just looking at me. And he said, clear as day. And this was at night when he pulled in, by the way, folks. It was like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. And my heart kind of, like, drops. I'm like, no way. There's no way. It, no way and i'm like are you sure and he's like yeah yeah so i call the cops and uh you know they say hey it's a dog outside my property it's not mine of course no one shows up because <laughs> you know it's uh, what can i say um so yeah no one shows up so i'm like yeah fantastic um and then like Later on, I hear, like, footsteps out in the woods while I'm backside smoking. So I'm like, yeah, no, no more cigars for me. I'll just deal with the pain. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that was the end of that. And then Richard, the guy staying with me, goes, um, he goes, hey, were you tapping on my window last night? This is, like, a couple weeks later. And um, I'm like, No. I would just text you or knock on your door like a normal human being. And he's like, the past couple of nights, he goes, I keep hearing tapping on the corner of my window. And there's like no trees there. There's nothing, nothing, right? And I'm like, did you look out the window? And he's like, yeah, I looked out, but I can't see nothing. And he's, that's on the second floor, mind you. So, you know, a two-story house. Um... So I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out big. And I'm like, I'm like, there's no way. I'm like, why would it come now? Why would it come now? Like everyone I listen to says it is physical. I'm like, I draw it in. There's no way. So I started, you know, praying about it. And like, I'm, I guess you call me un, un, undeclared or whatever, uh, Christian at that point. Um, and I'm like, man, just. God, please just get this thing away from me. I'm like, I do not want to see this thing. Do not let me see this thing. And uh, I never felt so helpless before, right? Like, I won't say I'm a tough guy. I'm, I've always been eager to jump into a fight. I always felt, I, I dive at alligators, for God's sakes. This is my hobby. I go up to the rivers in Carolina. I have my archaeology permits. And I dive for, like, artifacts and gators, in the dark water and it doesn't bother me 
I go spear fishing around sharks with fish strapped to my chest. No big deal. I know the animals. I keep my, you know, I know when to bail. I know when to, you know, I'm good. But this thing was just like, it felt like it was winning a stare down while even looking at me. And uh, so I started remembering my martial arts training as well. And I was just like, okay, you calm yourself and you keep, keep, keep your key, keep your composure. Don't show fear. You know, God's got me. I'm the master of this property. Nothing's not, like, no, this is not going down like this. You're not going to scare me before the fight's even started. So, and I stopped listening to dogging stuff completely. Um, and then a couple months later, I started listening to your show. Never had an issue. Never. Um, never had mm. more tapping on the windows. Never had that feeling. Like once I stopped listening to, you know, dogman stuff, it, that pressure just went away. And the only time I've ever felt that was backpacking up in like the northwest parts of Georgia and just like recognizing that pressure. And I said calm and I just removed my tent against a rock wall. Uh <laughs> took the risk of getting a rock to fall in my tent. So the extra protection. And went to sleep, and all was good. But I never saw one again. Never saw the one by my house. But here's a guy who literally, to my knowledge, does not know anything about dog man stuff. And is literally describing what can only, I mean, my mind be a dog man. Right outside my house. Just crazy. So, I mean, it was just wild. Wild, wild stuff. So let me ask you a question. <clears throat> now, like I said, my voice is getting hoarse. <clears throat> yeah, you're good. You're good. So let me ask you a question. You you were listening to other an, another channel. Yeah, I was listening like... to. Yeah, I was listening to you know. Okay, um, I think I know you're talking yeah. about. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not you trying to listen to it another. Up, yeah. It doesn't matter who, but you're listening to another channel and something. You felt like something bad was <laughs> happening. I mean, I felt like it was. I feel like it's bait. I feel like, I feel like we're, we're in like pitch, we're like in the ocean, right? We're pitch black dark. And I feel like when you give this stuff energy, not even in a worshiping fashion, but just when you have like energy you're directing at the subject, I feel like that turns on the light. And everything else in the void you can see, you know, you can see the light and it's like, oh, what's that? And you kind of lure it in, in a way. Um, like you felt like there was, was something spiritually happening. Yeah, and I felt like my fear in a way because it all hit me all at once. Like I didn't know I had dog when I was a kid, but it just all clicked. And then that just I'm injured. I'm vulnerable. It's just like the best case scenario for this thing. Mm. And uh, like I couldn't use my leg at all. <clears throat> like in spiritual it, blood know. in the water. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. Right. And it just felt like, you know, it was like, huh, oh, I don't even have to show myself this thing. Why would I waste that energy? I can just freaking, you know, let it know I'm around and siphon off some energy. But I was feeling kind of zap. Like, I always feel like I had a, a good, strong sense of uh, life energy or, you know, I don't know if anyone else believes in that kind of stuff, but I, I do. Yeah, I do. And, uh, right. So You're I always felt. Key. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I always kind of refer to it as key. I don't. This is because that's how I was taught it, and mm -hmm. I've experienced it. A lot of people it, don't know key. It. That's why I call it chi because most people know yeah. that, but they don't know exactly. that the, the Japanese form is key. K e. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, I appreciate you doing that because I've had to do it so many times. Whenever I, um, we even teach martial arts like the kids and you know, and the parents are like, what is that? And I was like, oh yeah, because they know chi and not key. Right, and they're like, is that yeah. some kind of Japanese tea? And I'm like, no. I'm like, first of all, it's India. <laughs> well, Second of all, no. you have fun with it, and you go, well, it is, but if you drink it, you die. Don't drink that's it. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, oh, well, exactly. I want to know where it's at. I can't tell you that. You'll die. It's in, it's in the Amazon. It's divine. <laughs> to chop and drink it. <laughs> it's, it's, <a> Japanese <laughs> it's great. Tea found in Indonesia in the middle of the Amazon. Okay, yeah. in Russia. Open up your yeah. third eye, or you might die. <laughs> One or the other. It's fun. Oh. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, and the fun fact about that house too, when I first bought it, so I had problems with, man, it's weird because like it's a dream, so I don't really ever know if I should call it a spiritual attack, but I would have dreams of random spirits trying to choke me or torment me in my sleep. And when my let me ask you a question. Hold before we go further for that. Yeah, go for it. Because I know there's going to be a lot of people that are going to. I'm going to. I'm going to say something. What happened to me? And I don't think I told you this, but what happened to me? Like there were th- at least three separate incidents that I that I can think of. There were several, but I think three that really stuck stood out. People asked me if I encountered the creature again, and I used to tell them no, not in the way that I saw it in a physical way. Nor right. did I actually see it in a, in a spiritual way, but I, I know that that thing was there because the same exact feeling I had from when I was 15, I had that same feeling years later, like three different times. And the, I think the most recent, most the, the most terrified I was recently was probably 2008 and I was okay. guarding a, a, a place that was being built and it was a, a, a retirement home and mm-hmm. I felt it. And I, I just knew that that's what it was. That was there. I don't know that it was in the physical form and it, the woods around there, but I felt just, it. And so I went to the back and I went inside one of the, the closets. It wasn't a closet. It was like a like a place where they kept like files and stuff. And they had it all set up for that, like filing cabinets. Yeah. And they had, they were new. They had just moved them all in. And so I just went back there. It was like a room within a room within a room. And I locked all the doors going back. There, and I thought, well, this is dumb because if it comes through, it's gonna I'm trapped. Yeah, I, but wondering, yeah. I just feel like, safe okay, in the box. Just, yeah, yeah. I just put myself in a box, but I get what you're saying. Like you felt like the spiritual essence of this thing, and you felt like it was around you. Yeah, now, like it was opposing my spiritual energy. Like, mm-hmm. I, I how would like how would like, would, you, would you kind of describe it the same way? Because like, I don't really get to hear about people ex- explaining that part of the aspect, like being able to feel it before you even kind of. Mm-hmm hear it or see it it's like a pressure it's like a, a pressure on my too that comes to you like you said like key you know and if you're if yeah. you're adept at using key like the energy yeah. that comes from within it's like they teach you how to push you know that's when you punch right. you're using exactly. your key you know and you're throwing your hands now kempo it's like rapid hand strikes and you attack like pressure points and you do things really fast it's like <clears throat> that's what you do and people yeah. don't realize that a lot of it is coming from your inner your inner energy and you're you're drawing Absolutely. that and you're like when you're when your arm cocks back it's like a bow and it's like bam right. and you use it yeah you force it I, you know and that that goes exactly. that energy goes out into that person exactly. people don't understand that they think that it's a joke when they see Bruce Lee doing the two finger punch or whatever that's a real thing it is he's it drawing absolutely upon is. his chi or ki yeah. in this case these things, and, they're attracted to spiritually strong people because if you're not in Christ or within the spirit, you know, these yeah. things can feed. And right. the worst thing to do is be a strong spiritual beacon, but have no base. Now, what are you without a foundation? Exactly. If you don't, if you build your house on sand, yeah, you're we, done. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's no defense. Do you want to answer some gone. questions about this before we move yeah, forward? Like, yeah, 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 absolutely. I'd love to. Does anybody in the audience have any questions? You got me all pumped here. I'm ready to, you know. Man, I'm <laughs> talking about me, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, no, anytime someone's talking about martial arts, and like you said, like a proper martial artist who knows about actually the flow of key and how to use mm-hmm. it, like it's, it's, it's the real deal. And it's like, oh, my God, I fought a, Kung, a master, like a real, not master, but Dude knew said kung fu for like but at the time, but I was always as long as I was alive and I fought him, and I, we fought for like forty five minutes, and it was just so. I mean, I was like drooling because I was so excited. This guy was just whooping my butt. His flow, his energy was so conserved, but yet it would explode, and it was like magical when I was fighting him, and I was so enthralled into our match. It was just like a little like we were friends. We became friends in the gym. We decided to go spar at my dojo. You know, my sensei was cool with it. And it was just like, it was so, it was like addicting because it was just like, this is beautiful, you know? Well, not many people actually appreciate because it's called martial arts. And a lot of people don't appreciate the art side of it. They just use it to dominate and defeat someone. But it's it's for self defense. Yeah. Like my sensei used to make us write papers. You know, a warrior in a garden and a gardener in a war. 
Absolutely. So that, that's why people have said things to me before. They're like, why do you need to know all that stuff? Because of the that world is... that we live in. You know, yeah. it's very simple. You wouldn't have had yeah. to have that if it was the Satya Yuga, but we're in the Kali Yuga. <laughs> So yeah. you kind of yeah. need to have those things to, to protect you. And you're, and there's so many people out there that are bad people. They don't care. Yeah. And if they, they learn it. I had some really good senseis and they would teach you like they weren't going to sign off on you going and fighting like that, at least for at least a year. There were a couple of them that were like that. And they were like, no, dude, because you're going to go and do something. Who knows what? I don't know you that well. Exactly. I'm going to teach you something that you're going to go use to hurt people or you're going to go and get beat up. And they're going to be like, that was my teacher. Like mm. nobody wants that yeah. reputation. Yeah. And I have a lot of mm -hmm. friends that are in, in martial arts. In fact, <clears throat> my friend Chris, Chris Trammell, I just put it on my Facebook. He's being abducted, abducted. He's being inducted <laughs> into the Colorado sports hall. Of, it's a, I think it's Colorado, but anyway, you know, he's a kickboxer and he's got some of his highlights on there and he's a good guy. So go check him out. Chris Trammell, he's coaching now. MMA nice, awesome. up in yeah. uh, Las Vegas, and we know a lot. Of, I'd, I'd say Tony, we probably know what at least two dozen really, really good martial artists. Yeah, fighters. I mean, even just growing up with my stepdad, I would meet him all the time. So you kind of get used to it, and <clears throat> you also like kind of realize like, oh, most of these guys know Wolf. Most of these guys like you know who know who Wolf is, and they have a better understanding of martial arts and stuff than I ever yeah. could. So it was always cool to be like, oh, these guys who I look up to also kind of look up to my uncle. So it was like, oh, that's that's awesome. Awesome. yeah, there was a lot of them that started yeah. to got into it because, yeah. because back when I was young, when I was young and you guys have, you know, like if I was your age, when you were like in your early twenties, when you got started or whatever in your late teens, there was no money yeah. in it. So you could go and no. fight all you wanted, <laughs> but if you got hurt, you just got hurt. There wasn't nothing. You it wasn't paying nothing. No. And I met a no. bunch of these guys down. I would go and fight, dude. And there were some guys get, down there. They were yeah, you get a drink voucher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my first. My first one while bills was a. Uh, they would take care of the EMT bill. They have like an EMT that, guy that's on about site. You can hope you, for. Get, you get free medical for the night, and then you get a drink voucher for like <laughs> twenty bucks, thirty yeah. bucks, and bragging rights if you won or humiliation if you lost. And uh, it wasn't, there's no guys like, you know, Francis Nagan out there. It no, was, dude, Nagan. No, you got these guys now. That, 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 that people ask me before, when I was in my 30s, like I was 35, let's say that, people would ask me this question. I don't want to talk to people always like, oh, you think you're bad. If they don't, if they don't know me in my real life, they don't know. They don't know what I'm talking about. Right. And I'll tell them, I was like, look. There's about 10% of this planet that can beat the crap out of me. And those are people that train every day and they do it as professionals. And if yeah. I got in the octagon with them, they choke me out and beat me up because I'm, I'm not on that level because I'm not training every day anymore. I don't do that. Right. But if, if the average person who thinks they're tough and they took a little bit of boxing or they thought that they learned some stuff, I'm going right. to break your leg. I mean, that's just yeah. going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. You don't, that's the natural way of things. I'm yeah. more trained and I've been around the block a lot. And so yeah. when I and say you? that, people think, oh, this guy thinks he's tough. You know what? I could put this popcorn down and go beat him up. You know, but that's, you know, that's it's what people do. It's all chatter. Yeah. Because that's, yeah, that's they what they're know. trained to do. They, do. they know do that. And then when something really pops off and then when the other person is a psycho, it's like, oh, yeah, I, I do this all the time. This is fun for me. I've been hit hundreds of times and I know what they expect. And, yeah, let's have some, some fun. Let's but sort but the this out. The thing you learned this and you know this, uh, Larry, is you learn how to get punched. Oh, yeah. You can't take a lick. You oh, have no yeah. business fighting. Yeah, anybody yeah. can look uh, r real big and bad on a heavy bag, but the heavy bag don't hit back and it doesn't move. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And taking the anger out of it, like when guys get all emotional and flustered, they're very lost. You got to just, you know, just go in just clear and just be a machine, you know, and not take anything mm -hmm. personally either. Like most people yeah. after you would come in and they would fight. I mean, if someone had beef with someone, like, uh, I know it was one guy, Wayne, his son died. And, I mean, I mean, I had the hardest thing about it, looking at him as a broken man. And he kept coming back, and he just always wanted to, to fight. And it helped him, recovered him, because he was just getting it out. You know, he'd bow, and he'd leave everything at the door, and he'd just come in, and he would just be a machine, and he would just work. He would just work, and he would just get lost into the flow. And it helped him come back mm -hmm. from that, man.
you know. Let me tell you a quick story, Larry. You and the whole audience, I want to tell you something. This is not about me being tough. This is humility, and I'll tell you what it is. This guy's Absolutely. name was Rick McGuffey. Okay. I don't know. He lived in Oregon. Y'all can look him up if he's I haven't talked to him in years. Okay. I'm sure he was still around. He remembers me. He went to go be a preacher. He was a little short, blonde haired guy. I've told you this story. Anthony's already gonna laugh because he knows. And and Tony. Yeah. Little short blonde haired dude. And he was the nicest guy. And I used to train with him. And he was all like Ned Flanders, like, ogly dogly. Oh, come on, man. We're going to fight. Come on. Come on, Josh. I'm going to take you down. And I'd always be like, okay, stop calling me Josh. That's not my name. Everybody calls me Wolf. And he's like, oh, come on, man. Come on, man. You know, and you're just so disgusted by his happiness. Okay. Yeah. Six days in a row, this guy beat my ass, choked me out in front yep. of the whole place. Okay. Yep. And then he would be so friendly about it. And I just wanted to kill him. Because yeah. we weren't punching, yeah. but he was just, he would crawl, get get rear naked choke. He'd flip me over, and I couldn't beat this guy. He was yeah. half my size. And he's like, finally one day, about a week of getting my ass kicked by this same guy, I'm like rolling my eyes. I gave him a job at my club. I said, might as well hire this guy. This guy can beat me up. <laughs> it wasn't so much that he could beat me up. He had the technique. And, you know, he stopped one day, and he stopped smiling, and he got real serious. And he goes, you know what your problem is? He's like, your energy's off balance. And I was like, I look at this guy and I'm like, this guy's choked me to where I saw nothing but black like several times. And I wanted to beat him up right there. And so I just (laughs) reared back like I was going to hit him and went at him. And he goes, oh, no, no, I'm not trying to punch with you. He goes, you beat me up in that. He's like, but we're not boxing. You know, this is jujitsu. And I'm all like, yes, it is. Uh, And, you know. You know, I jokingly, I said, if we we boxed, I'd beat you up. And he'd always go like, well, yeah, but we're not we're not boxing. This is jujitsu. Right. Right. And he would choke the living crap out of me. And then he arm barred me, ankle locked me, did everything that he could possibly do. And I'm like, what else is there? I'm just getting just schooled by this dude. Played like a fiddle. Yeah. Yeah. And he told me, he says, your energy is unbalanced, man. He like pokes me in my chest. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know how I'm, I'm not at that point in time in my life as a 22 year old guy I thought he was tough I yeah. wasn't in the position to go you know what you're right my energy's unbalanced teach me about key you know? right right I was not in that mode I was, I was like I want to yeah. rip this guy apart because he's beating me up every day yep. so then we put the gloves on one day and I thought I'm going to really just teach this guy a lesson I'm going to show him how to box and I and I beat him but he goes, can we use our legs? And I'm like, sure, whatever. I just wanted to beat him up, and I was throwing. Yeah. And he got me in the corner, and then he just, like, threw the hardest leg kick on my left. I thought I was going to pee myself. Oh, and God, I couldn't. Yeah. I, you know, I had to look tough. I couldn't be like, oh, God. This guy just hurt <laughs> yeah. me. You know, and I'm, I'm like, yeah, oh, start I didn't smiling from the face. I was limping <laughs> yes. around. And then he goes, hey, let's stop, man. You're hurt, man. You're hurt. And I'm like, get away from me. You know, and you're so mad. <laughs> So finally, I started hanging out with this guy. We went to a bar. We had a couple of drinks at this place called Shakespeare's. We used to go hang out. My friend Big John used to work there. He's a, he's a fighter, too. And, and uh, he's like, you know what your problem is? He goes, you get emotionally invested and you get mad. And that's how you talk. You get mad. <laughs> and, and, and he had one eye that was kind of messed up, whatever. And I, said, I looked at him. I was a mean, nasty guy, you know. And yeah. I said, your eye is ugly and you're ugly. Okay. That's what I think. I was so mad. Couldn't beat yeah. this guy up. And he yeah. goes, that's your problem right there. He's like, yeah. you're looking at my eye. You're looking at my height. He goes, I know I look like Ricky Schroeder from Silver Spoons. So I, like, <laughs> I said, yes, you do. Y'all probably don't know what that is unless you're old like me. And he's yeah, like, but the problem is you're, you're too invested in the anger. And then he goes, and then he punches my chest just lightly with two fingers, and it hurt. Right. And he yeah. goes, that's why I beat you. He's like, yeah. come to the gym tomorrow. Don't be mad. Come in there and just be yourself. And you know what yeah. I did? I learned. I opened myself up and I said, I'm going to learn from this guy. This guy's yeah. got a, a higher pedigree than me. Stop trying to fight outside your your, your class. Stop trying to go, go at people. Yeah. Who Align yourself. You. Yeah. yeah. Listen and to learn. Lane and learn and learn. And yeah. that's what I did. I learned. He, I never beat him up. Never beat him up. Um, I could outbox him just hand to hand, but if he used his legs or if he he could shoot under, he'll beat me every time. And this was not a really big dude. And he used pure technique and focus. 
And he yep. was one of the first people that preached to me about key. He was like, use your key, use your key, use your key. And he would always say that. And I was just like, this guy's annoying as hell. But we became really good friends. And then he moved back to Oregon <laughs> and he called me one day and he says, you know, um, <clears throat> I loved my time there in Texas hanging out with you guys. He's like, but God called me to be, to preach. And that's what I'm going to do. And at that nice. time in my life, I was not in a place where I wanted to to be hearing about God and all that stuff. I was like, yeah, yeah, God's yeah. there or whatever. But I was doing my own thing. And I was like, good for you. I'm glad for you. Um, but looking down, looking now, I look back and I'm thinking, you know, I learned a lot from that little dude. He was a little blonde haired yeah. guy. He used to beat me yeah. up every day. And, and it was like, this kid's taking your lunch money, you know, and you, and you yeah. gotta be, I'm a tough guy. The average person, I'll tear their face off, but this dude, he's just like taking me to school because yeah. he told me, he goes, dude, I had to learn just like you need to learn. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's we, the truth, man. People don't want to learn. Yeah. They want to walk in there and go, I'm going to do ankle locks. And you're like, really? Right. Cause you're about two years from that. How about you just yeah. get your ass whooped and shut up? You know? Yeah. People, people can't let their ego die. Most people can't no. let their ego die. They have this fictitious image of their head. Uh, they're the big bad monster, mm -hmm. right? And they have this beautiful plan. It's like Mike Tyson said, you know, everyone's got a great plan until they get punched in the face. And then reality sets yeah. in. And that's why people come into the dojo. They want to do this and that. And they're cracking jokes because they're trying to deflect when someone's trying to teach them seriously. And some people walk out, or they just don't come back. The, or some actually sit hurt. and listen. That's the problem. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, my and I was the same way. A lot. I was the same way. Like me, like I was a little crap, man. When I was like <laughs> in high school, I would, my dad, you know, we're Italian. So we always go at it, you know? And I was like, man, I'm tired. I don't want to, I wanted to learn to fight and this and that. And the same thing. I came into a dojo and I was hot headed and I was cocky because I'm like really flexible. I did ballet too when I was younger. So That's my flexibility, Balance. yeah, my, my flexibility, my joints are insane. So someone gave me a triangle. Or uh, they try to throw, throw me no goshi, and they mess it up right, and they still got the arm bar. I can just squat, pivot, and just pop right out of it. So I'm soon cocky. And uh, we were Roger Pentley. You know, you, oh, I won a fight, right? And it was just from strength. And it was against someone like, a little bit younger than me. And he goes, uh, you're happy, right? And I'm like, yeah, I won. And he goes, go sit outside. You're done tonight. Wait for your mom to pick you up. Wow. And I was just like so angry. I was like, like screw him, this and that, you know, all well, the curse words and all. Yeah, because you, you all demonetized. You don't get it. What he's no. teaching you? No, you don't know what being centered is. You don't mm -hmm. know about controlling the flow and detaching your emotions and mm -hmm. feeling yourself, feeling your soul and your body become one. And just like for me, I always vision key like a whip. I'd build it up and then just you know, pow, you know, let it explode. Um, and as I get older, I got more into reading. Like, uh, it's a good book out there called The Tao of Physics. Mm -hmm. um, it was written by a, uh, I believe, it was an Aikido guy. He was also an astrophysicist. <clears throat> and uh, it's really interesting read. But, um, but, but all my senseis throughout the years have taught me more and more about it and more just about when you master it yourself, then you can become something better. And learning martial arts calm me down it gave me insane amount of perspective in life and made me just realize like okay i was being a turd to my parents <laughs> no wonder they were we were going at it you know my dad would work hard and then i would be just jerk kid you know or oh i would do this and that and then uh cause a fight and you know most the most shameful street fights most of shame that i feel in the street fights were the ones i've won where I was looking back when I was younger, I was like, God, I was a prick. You know, it was, it was early stages of martial arts, early, early stages. But well, you know, as the, you get older, the average you just person, learns, that's what they do. They, they yeah. go in there to try to, they want to be able to beat people up. Yeah. But you exactly. got to learn how to get beat up before you can do any of that. And yeah, or learn to not, not escalate like, it, de you know, de escalate it. Let someone splash mm -hmm. a beer on me. Okay. Yeah, sure. Have a good day. <laughs> How funny. I look like a wimp. And just laugh it off versus, yeah, you know, you get into a fight, no matter what, both people lose because you're hurting somebody and you're creating an enemy and all this other stuff. And, the ego you know. is, so, is so, it's so hard to get past that because you, you want, to, especially it when is. you're first starting, you want to go in there and you want to compete with these people, but you don't realize how long the process is. 
Right. It's a long process, and learning each form has its own advantages. I, I, I very, very much believe in the Jeet Kune Do way. Just whatever works for you, take a piece from this, a piece from yes. that. Yes. Yes, absolutely. It, yeah. Absolutely. It's like, yes, it's like Steven, the Kung Fu guy I would fight. I, I learned from him, too, just fighting him and learning his style and adapting it to mine and making myself more fluid. And it was just, it, it's not about kicking someone's butt, even. It's just like the... It's like, oh, this is the answer to become better. This made me better. I want more of this. You know, Getting like the hunger for knowledge. In failure a way. is is where you learn. Yeah, absolutely. My, you know, yeah. you learn you learn more from mistakes than you success. Success just blocks your ability to learn from that situation. That's all it does. Let me tell you a funny story. And I'm gonna tell you this one. Th- this happened. Speaking of my friend Aris, I was talking about him earlier. Yeah, he failed. Uh, in business over and over again. And 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 I know one of the things that, that he talked about how he borrowed some money from his dad and he invested in something that didn't work out. I warned him. I said, this isn't going to work. And it, it, But he wanted to follow his dream. Right. But eventually he kept trying. And now he's a very successful guy. Yeah. One night, one day, one day he went to work at the startup company and they had locked the doors. And he had invested all this money in these people. He thought that they were his friends. Shit. And they yeah. just laughed at him when he was standing outside. And, you know, and he, he said, I was never, he didn't have a, a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. And he's like, dude, I'm sitting there going like, all I got is my car. Yeah. And these guys totally just took a big crap. I mean, Anthony, you've heard him tell this story. Yeah. And he eventually went and he became, he finally made it. He's successful now. He owns like three restaurant bars, bar and grills, you know, and he's doing well. He works nice. a lot. He's a workaholic. Like he's one of my best friends, and he's had dogman encounters. And he he also trains. He was a boxer, uh, kickbox, and did all this training and stuff. Did, does all that, and now he's got his daughter into it, and he's doing that, you know. But then he's got a reputation. Awesome. Everybody knows who he is. Yeah, you know. And and we talk about it all the time. You have to start somewhere. I remember one night there was this guy, and he was he was a narco, and his buddies were in there, and they would always come into our bar. And I was in there. I wasn't working there anymore. I was just hanging out. And this guy kept throwing, like, paper at him and just messing with him. This guy, Rudy. Yeah. And he kept messing with Arash. One of those. Yeah. yeah. And he kept on. And Arash, he's a tall, skinny guy. I always say he looks like Waluigi. I mess it with him, you know. And so yeah. he's like, he, he, he rolls his sleeves up and he says, when I'm done with this, if you, this is two hours before close. He goes, if you're still here, when this shift ends, he goes, I'm going to beat your ass. He goes, oh, really? You're going to beat my ass, Lotto? He starts he's messing with him, messing with him. And I'm standing yeah. right there, and he looks at me, and I said, what do you want me to do? And he goes, are you are you going to fight for him? Because that's the only way he's going to get out of this. And I said, I don't need to fight for him. Just make sure your homeboys don't jump in. Right, and he exactly. said, I don't need no help with this this dude, this, you know, whatever. And so I told him, I said, all right, you know, puro chingazos, do what you got to do, man. Beat him up, throw yeah. hands, I don't care. So I went back to my table, and I sat there. There were four of us there. It was me, Squid, Diablo, Scorpion. We're all sitting there. Oh, yeah, and my friend Willie. It was five of us. And Willie goes back up to the bar, and it was about 15 minutes to close. And they were about to do the drink pickup, which is 2 o'clock. You get everybody has to give the, you know. And Rudy yeah. was still there with his with his, uh, with his his homeboys. And I went over to him, and I said, you're going to beat him up? And he says, hell yeah, I'm going to beat him up. This guy thinks he's tough, man. He got smart with me. He's always disrespecting me. I said, I said, okay, do what you got to do. Rudy was probably about 40 pounds bigger and heavier than him. And I said, do you have any training at all? And he says, man, I've been in the joint four times. I don't need training, Holmes. I said, okay, you do what you got to do. Yeah. At the end of the shift, and I told me and my friends walked over to him, and we went to each one of his friends, and I said, don't jump in. It's one-on-one. And they're like, nah, man, we don't need to jump in. My kind of now can take this dude, whatever. Yeah. Arash finished his deal. Counted his money, and he says, I'll be with you in a second, sir. Puts the money away. I guess you can figure where this is going. He comes around the bar. He rolled his sleeves up, and they started dancing around about three seconds, and it was like a quick, like, four-hit combo, and it was over that quick. And our Ash was like, are we done? I guess we're done. And the guy was laying there. He wasn't unconscious, but he was close. Yeah, he he, he was rocked. My brother picked him up, and we helped him because he'd never been in anything but nice to me, so I was like, whatever. I helped right. him up, and it was a fair fight. Nobody jumped in, and everybody went home. Yeah, We walked him outside, and I told him, hey, man, you know, maybe you should learn how to box because that guy, yeah. he's a golden gloves. He knows how to fight. And, you you know, he goes, well, somebody should have told me. I said, I did tell you. If you're too busy, 
you know that's too funny i was just like you were too busy you know being tough and whatever yeah um i don't know Hell, some, of the, just... some of the some of the best friendships too i've known you know i've seen were started by a fight and you know it can happen too yeah you know it can go either way it's gonna it's kind of interesting you know <laughs> it's like i remember uh friend zach and tyler and you know, they went at it you know hard and i was like all right I was in my my basement, parents' house. I was like, "Okay, let's clear everything out." <laughs> I had that happen Guys, a lot go in my yard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> our basement was kind of neat. It had like a little sofa that came up from the floor, and it was carpeted, so it was like a almost like a dojo in a little way. It was kind of uh, the walls were passed in case someone was flying in there. It didn't really bang any sheetrock, and uh, they just went at it. You know, honestly, on the rules, like no, like you know, don't grab, no grabbing of the throat and stuff like that. No, uh, yeah, you know, vicious, no, you know. Petty stuff Those rules always go out the window, though, when your friends, oh, my yeah. friends, will start fighting exactly. and they just try to kill each other, bite each other. Once start, all kinds yeah, of once one starts losing, he, he pulls out all the stops. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah. Because the, 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 the brain body spirit connection doesn't know that it's not dying. Right. It thinks that so it's, it's going to die. So your instinct exactly. kicks in and that adrenaline overload, and then you just start going crazy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. One of the best exactly. fights I ever saw was between Chief, my friend Chief, who's been on the show. We had our differences, me and him, but we patched it up. And Scorpion. And I watched them just turn each other's face into Burger King. And ultimately, Chief won because he had better wrestling skills. Yeah. Very simple. Yep. And Everything so Scorpion around. told me, what do I need to do? I said, you need to get better at wrestling. Because yep. in a, in a straight-up fight, it, it could up on the ground or it might not. But he took you to the ground and he schooled you. Yep. Because Chief's a good wrestler and Scorpion wasn't. Now, he got better. But, I mean, yeah. you, can't, you can't be mad, man. And you can't be afraid no. to fail. So many people will walk into a gym. And they'll get punched in the face, and then they get mad. Right. I watched a guy one time when I was coaching years ago on the east side. This guy walked back to his car and got his gun. Yeah, he he tried to wow. come. I knew the guy. His name was Jermaine, and I said, "Jermaine, dude, yeah. chill." I was like, "Dude, yeah. this is a, this is a boxing gym. What did you think this guy was going to do?" And he, but that guy was set tripping. I was like, "When you come into this gym, you're not a blood, you're not a crip, you're not a Latin king. Right? You're none of that." You're just a guy learning how to box. If you can't handle it, don't do it. I said, you're going to let this guy show you up. You're going to come grab a gun. He walked right. back to his car. He put it up. He came back in and he learned how to fight. Exactly. And a good true thing story, for you, man. There. I mean, he could have he went and, in there and made a life decision that would have would have put him behind bars and killed that other guy. He could have shot me. Yeah, yeah. You know? Shot you, some innocent person. You know, I'm sure he wouldn't have a great aim. Well, hyped up on adrenaline, the heart rate. Yeah, he was you know, that, just, that, that, just that gun injured. hand starts moving when your heart rate goes up. <laughs> you don't have the same aim you do at the range. Even if you did yeah. put it in range time, you know, which may practice not have is always easier than the real thing. And so that's the that's exactly. the moment of truth when you can get in there and this is not playtime. You're actually fighting somebody and there's no people around to break it up and stop it. That's when you're yeah. when it's real, you know. And if it was and if it wasn't for your friend. You know, you know, for again, you know, um, you know, the Simpsons character, you know, Fl- 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 uh, Flanagan, to teach you all that, and now you've passed on to someone else, and you're impacting other lives that root from that guy, who ever thought that guy, you know, caused that action. So it's all, it's all connected. You know, it all, it all matters. You know, you saved a life that day. You, you know, just from something you've learned that you know you went through. You know, it wasn't as extreme as that, but. You know, we all impact each other some way, somehow, I feel like. and uh, You can't always happens... be the badass. I mean, you can be the badass no. in your head, but there's at some point you have to be beaten. And I mean, and I was beaten yes. when I was young. The same guy beat me up twice in my freshman year in high school. I had about eight fist fights, undefeated. Yep. A guy half my size named Don, okay, yep. whooped my ass really good. And so I was mad. Mm-hmm. I wanted revenge. So I'm coming from the field house, and I see him walking home. And I run over there and with some of my friends from football, and we're like, I'm going to get this guy. Yeah. And, and we start fighting. And this time I do a lot better, and I get him to the ground, and I'm a lot bigger than him. Yep. And the dude ends up somehow getting in my lower, you know, whatever, and pushed me up off of him. And then he kind of flipped me, and then he just got some kind of angle, and he started nailing me in the face. And then they broke it up. And I would always tell myself, I would have beat him. I would have beat him. But no, I probably wouldn't have. I probably would have just kept getting hit in the face. Right. <laughs> so it just, it just like, and, and I know that second fight was closer to what should have happened. Would have, should have, could have, doesn't matter. Everybody went around saying, exactly. you got beat up by the same guy twice. Okay, you have my number. I know yeah. the guy now. He's a good friend of mine. And he's like, has no interest in fighting anybody. 
Right. But he got me as a freshman in high school. He got me, and I had, I had whooped some seniors, but this yeah. dude. He took it to me twice, and I got I got to admit I got taken behind the woodshed twice by the same guy. Yeah. It just it just he hung an L yeah. on me, and it's a pride thing. You just want to you want to chew nails, but it's yeah. all part of the learning <laughs> process. It is, it is, and it grows you spiritually too. It does. I encourage I encourage everyone to get into it, and some people are like oh, I don't know, it's just that I'm like I'm like it's it's not like MMA, it's not like you know, it's it's, it's not like that. It's it's I don't even know how to describe it. It's like uh, other than just you know, growing yourself as a person. And I feel like it's part of why we're on this planet too, man. Like I, I wasn't always, you know, right with God and, uh, and your show kind of helped me get back on there actually, because I had that's questions. That, that's that the whole sense. thing, man. Yeah, that's man. I mean, it's thing. true. And I impacted someone else who I was, you know, seeing at the time. And, and that's just a trickling effect, you know, because you got questions. The book doesn't make too much, you know, there's some, Weird stories in the Bible when you're like in King James, you're like, what? That doesn't make sense. Huh? What? You know, and then people people fall away because they don't understand it because they think that the Bible says this and says that because somebody told them. You know how many times people will say something? They'll be like, well, this is what, and then that person will believe yep. what that person said, and they'll carry it with them for two decades until they open the book up themselves. I'm not just talking about the yep. Bible, any book. Yep. And then exactly. they read it and go. Well, that person lied to me. Well, that person may not have lied to you. That person may have thought that that's what they read. But you need to do right. yourself a favor and go figure it out yourself. It's the same exactly. thing with anything. I tell everybody the same thing, whether you're whether it's you're, you're fighting or training, how to learning how to fight or learning how to ride a bike. I mean, you got to have a good teacher. And right. one of the things I try to do, and I pride myself on, is trying to teach people. People get a misconception of me because they think, oh, this guy thinks she's the baddest guy in the world. No, trust me. I've met some bad bad dudes out there right will tear you apart now am i afraid of them intimidated them by i'm not afraid of intimidated by anybody but the right. thing is you got to understand that they're on a different level they're out there training fighters to go into the ufc now am i going to go up there and go oh you know what let's go fight no right. now if that person attacks me i'm going to defend myself but i'm going to yeah. be the first person to tell you that person is probably going to take me behind the woodshed there right. is nobody that's the baddest person on earth. And the thing is, people don't no. understand. It's like rock, paper, scissors. You could maybe beat yeah. me. I could beat Anthony. Anthony could beat yeah. you. And we could just go around in one big circle and never nobody dominates anybody because nobody can decide who's the best. It happens in exactly. sports all the time. And people think that they don't understand. They don't grasp that concept. No. They Sometimes don't understand somebody just has your number. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. The other person could be feeling it. They're locked in. Uh, they got mm -hmm. Satori going on. They're in the zone. Satori. And, <laughs> you, know, yeah. <laughs> you know about Satori. Yeah. yeah. Explain oh, to the yeah. audience what Satori is. That's a very spiritual thing right there. It is. And, God, you asked me that. I'm trying to figure out how I would explain that. It's – okay, so for everyone listening, have you ever been doing something? And it could be a craft. It could be a hobby. It could be a sport. It could even be a moment you're talking to someone. And it it's like – Everything in your body, in your soul, in your connection to, you know, the higher being, whether it's the Holy Spirit, you know, or God, but everything just feels turned on. Everything's fully aligned, and you have this insane amount of flow, and you're doing everything perfectly. Like when I refer to Centauri and fighting, or if I like one time I experienced it going down a rapids when I was kayaking, and I was, it just and it just clicked, and I just saw the path, and I did everything. I did everything at once. It was just, it's like autonomous. You have autonomous reaction that is like perfect. And it's referred to as Centauri. And it's just a means of your soul and your being and everything in the universe. You're vibrating at the most synchronized frequency possible. And you're just, you're, you're flawless. And it doesn't last forever. <laughs> it lasts sometimes kind of short. Seconds. Uh, relatively short. Yeah, because the moment you start thinking about it, it's like, you're out of it. And then you're like, oh, crap. <laughs> you, you know what uh -huh. it is? Whenever, whenever I would coach or teach somebody, you know, about like what I know, they yeah. would always tell me like, is, is there like, because there's always somebody bigger and badder. I'll say yes, but not, it's not a man. It's a time. Right. And people exactly. would ask me that. And what I, what I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell the audiences too, 
and I mean, this may be kind of boring, but this is paranormal too because it's yeah, not, it is. It's not the normal, it's, it's not, but it's it not is. Science. It is. I believe this is yeah. normal though, but but it's considered paranormal. Yeah, yeah. Time, mastering the time is most important because there's a time when you first wake up or when you're really tired or when you eat a big meal, a Girl yeah. Scout could, could come to sell you cookies and beat you up and take your, your lunch money, okay? Yeah. What I'm telling yeah. you right now is there's a time when you were weak and there's nothing yes. you can do. So you got to know when to hold them, when to fold them, when to walk away. Yeah. King Rogers, <laughs> Amen. right? Amen. And then there's a time Amen. when you are at your strongest and you your key is completely on point. Yeah, you're in the zone, the Satori, the time is slowing down. You're watching everything, and they're moving in slow motion. You're moving yes, fast, man. and you're knocking, you're tearing them up because My, you're in that Satori, you're in that zone. And that is, you got to know that time. You do. And that it's, time is very important. It's so fascinating because I love whenever I can get into that, uh, to say Satori because it, I, I want to try to dissect it. Like, it's like what I do. I'm, you know, feel the science, right? And it's almost, I always kind of wonder if that's like us touching the other dimension, right? Because time is kind of like slowed, right? So time is becoming less relevant. And you do things in which your neurons can't really fire that fast, if you're really good at Centauri. And it's almost like you're, you're, you're able to operate in that higher dimension than the one you're currently in. Like the connection just got supercharged. I was, this is like a little theory of mine. I always kind of wonder if that's part of what's going on and why time slows down. And then you're just able to just do that. You you move without even thinking. And, you know, I was I always wonder if that's because, you know, in the higher dimensions, no such thing as time. So it, you, you just do, right? You're not commanding your body. It is just reacting. It is. But what was that? Like it's a, it's, how it's we a, to me, it's it. a perfect balance between mind, spirit, and body. Right, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, I I just always wondered if that was like part of that. Once you're fully, you know, balanced and you're fully centered, because we're spiritual beings and a physical experience, right? Um, if that's what we're experiencing, we're experiencing the autonomy where you're aware of that. You are spiritually there, and this third dimensional world is like. No obstacle whatsoever, in a sense. I don't know. This is like a theory. It, it's a temporary transcendence of where you're at. Right. You're right. You're right. And and that's also when you go beyond that 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 lower level. Because like say say if we would all be able to see into the second with the second sight into the into our world into the fourth right. dimension. Right. You would see entities that would scare the hell out of you. Yeah. But if you can or- transcend that and you go up to that higher level immediately you see things clearly and you're looking down at all this stuff and you realize that these lower level entities that everybody's communicating with and playing around with they're garbage i mean i'm yeah, being honest exactly. i'm being real yeah, honest they're like, garbage it's man. nothing it's yeah. nothing it's it's so bizarre and it's like trying to describe to someone who's never seen the color blue what the color blue looks like mm-hmm. and you think and about being it able you're to like, see in all directions that's something people don't do you leave your yeah. body you know, yeah. you leave your body and that that's when you achieve like a transcendence. People don't understand that, you know. So you, no. you had like a ghost encounter after this last dog man encounter? Um, yeah, I did. I did. It was actually, I was going to mention too, when I moved into that house, like when, by the time I moved into this house, I was like 21, 22. And that's in, still in the, I was still actively training and studying martial arts and whatnot. Um. I never felt anything spiritual in the house at all. But when I first moved in, you know, this is, you know, way before my accident, um, I had roommates, right? And it was my buddy Trey. Oh, I don't say, I should say names. But uh, my friend, his, you know, fiance, um, another buddy and his girlfriend. Because, um, you know, I was like a four bedroom house. I got it before the whole hike, price hike. It was like 2016, right? So I lucked out. Um, but she was very sensitive. So, my friend, her fiance, a funny guy, dude. He, he talked like this. And he talked about ego, this one. It, it was immense. He was a wrestler and he almost got stayed. And uh, oh, my, he's always like, ah, I'm the best. All the ladies love me. Like, <laughs> he was the whitest kid ever. But he acted so, like, you know, just ridiculous. It was, uh, it was awesome. <laughs> um, so, but he, had, he worked at Best Buy at the time and he bought this TV. It was a curved 4K 
TV, right? He loved this thing. He loved that TV. And he hung it up in my living room because I just bought the house. I'm broke, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm making like third year, second year pay for a couple months. So I got the third year raise. At the time, I was like, I was like, ooh, live on edge, you know? And uh, had a company truck. So I didn't have to worry about my own car and whatnot. So I was like, yeah, man, please put your TV up. This thing's nice. So he had a bottle of TV cleaner. Like he'd clean it, man, like every couple of days. He'd clean that TV. And it was above the fireplace that we never used. Like, like no one ever touched it, you know, just to get a dust off of it. So he came up to me one time and was like, hey, man, so like really mad. He's like, hey, man, someone keeps touching my TV. And then you tell them everyone to stop. And I'm like, that makes zero sense, dude. Why would they touch your TV? Like with his remote, like, with, like why? But if someone's doing it. And it needs an ant now because that thing's expensive. And I'm like, okay, I hear you. I'll tell everyone. I just the group text. I was like, hey guys, just please don't touch your TV. Um, I need to keep the peace here. And everyone's like, okay, we haven't, but sure. And man, like I think with less than a week, um, it's a weekend, and I hear, hey, Larry, Larry, and he's like, ah, he's calling everyone's name. He's like. House meeting, house meeting. I'm like, this dude's calling a house meeting and he's not even his house. I'm like, okay. So, like, you know, I've known this guy forever since I moved up to Georgia. So, I'm, you know, the antics were kind of funny. So, I'm like, all right, I'll keep this. Let's, let's have a house meeting. And we're in the living room. And he's like, okay. You know, it's like eight o'clock in the morning. And we're like, what? And he's like, he's like, look at my TV. Tell me those aren't fingerprints. And I go and look at it and there's like literally smudges all over this TV screen, mm. all over. And um, I'm looking at him like, yeah, this look like finger smudges. And he's like, he's like, who's been doing it? And I'm like, well, let's put, let's get closer and put our hands up there and see whose hand size it is. Yeah. I'm like, obviously, someone who hates hates you, dude, <laughs> is messing with you because obviously someone's messing with him. And we get closer, and their baby, their toddler handprints. Clearly, there's dermal Ooh. ridges on it, and there's little toddler handprints all up and down the TV. The TV top of the TV's got to be like. Um, like eight foot, nine foot, almost. I mean, from the floor, right? like eight foot. I mean, it's, it's a big TV, and they were all over, but clear thermal ridges, toddler, like not, I couldn't fit, like, like but, oh, totally fit in the palm of my hand, and everyone else's for that matter. Uh, def, you know, definitely smaller than the girls' hands that were living there, and I was just like, what? That's a chance. And he's like, well, whose is it? I'm like, Trey, come here. I'm like, dude, come over here. Look at this. And he's like, what? I'm like, look at these handprints. Look at our hands. And he's just like, what? I'm like, these are toddler handprints. And he's like, who has a baby? I'm like, none of us. And we've never invited a baby over here. And you wash, you clean this thing like like once a week at least. And then we all just kind of stopped and he stopped being angry. And his fiance started like getting like freaking out. And we're like, what's up? And she's like, I've been having dreams of a dead baby oh. in this house. And she's like, I didn't want to say it. And she started crying. She's like, I would hear it. I'd go down the stairs and I'd, I'd come down and it would just be, just be, you know, like dead on, dead in the crib. And she was just like crying. And we're just mm. like, we're like, okay, <laughs> this is super weird. And uh, she used to claim to like see like spirits walking through the walls or whatever. Uh, but I never saw anything or felt anything. And I always wondered if my, you know, my key was, I was really centered. I was definitely a matured martial artist at that point. I was very collected and centered. And I always wondered, like, maybe I just couldn't feel it because I was just covered, you know. I had that energy, that, that mm. dense energy. You know, I was kind of like shut off from it. From when I was a kid, I could see it. Because when she started talking about it, I was like, I remember seeing it as a kid, you know. And this other time, and this predates the dog man encounter at my house in Georgia. Um, so this other time, it was me and her again. We're at the house. We're hanging out. Um, <laughs> I remember because we're just uh, this cartoon we used to watch as kids came back on as a continuation series, like Samurai Jack. And she, me and her were like, "Oh, dude, we should watch it," you know. So we're watching it, and like her, like I've known her forever since like the beginning of high school. So it wasn't odd for me to hang out with her or go to the gym with her whenever my buddy wasn't home. We were all super close, you know? Like, you know, you know how it is. So we're just hanging out, and then it's like nighttime, right? 
And all of a sudden, we notice, like, a bright light comes outside. Like, bright, bright. And we're like, what the heck is this? So we go in the front yard, and it looks like daytime. And it's like 10 yeah. o'clock at night. But it is, like, it, it, it is, like, perfectly illuminated. And there's no source. No source. The sky, everything. And we're like, what the hell is this? And we're, you know, just looking around. And I'm, like, looking by the trees, oak trees around my house. I'm, like, I'm looking. And I'm, like, this is nothing. My neighbor's house is somewhat illuminated. But it's kind of focused on my house. But the whole area is just, like, lit up. There's no focal point. And I'm, like, this makes zero sense. I tried texting my neighbors. They didn't respond. All the lights were off. When it was only 10 o'clock. It was kind of odd. Um, and I'm like, what the hell is this, man? So we went inside and we couldn't figure it out. So we decided to ignore it. And, um, and it just, it just turned off, went away. And then we went back outside, pitch black. Made zero sense. Yeah. I don't know what to make of that. Um, so, but yeah. We, does anybody in the audience have questions for Larry before we close this out? Um, yeah. Let me see if anybody has any questions that they want to ask. <clears throat> yeah, because we're over three hours now, and we talked about all kinds of stuff. I mean, we just yeah, <laughs> went all over the <laughs> it's place. kind of wild. It's kind of wild. The 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 method to my madness, folks, just so you know, is that I wanted you to be comfortable. Okay. Yes. And, um, I wasn't pretending. No, I just thought that we could talk about whatever, so you could be comfortable with you know doing this because you seemed like you were a little nervous, so. Yeah, it's I didn't, you know, I I kind of expected this, but at the same time, like as it came closer, I heard you go, All right, let's bring on a guest. I was like, Oh man, I'm actually doing this. <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, I get why other people bail, you know, but I was like, Nah, I I wanna do this. I wanna come on and uh, you know, share my story. You know. <laughs> no AI here. Just uh, a mm -hmm. weird life, you know. Well, a lot of people have that, but you recognize it. I do believe that because of your training and a lot of other things that you went through, it helped you to, to be more understanding of, of, hey, there's something weird here. Because people will look at something that's completely whacked out and they'll just be like, well, I just ignore it. It's, it's not there. It's not real. Exactly. Is that, is that correct? Is that correct? Yeah. It's like the handprint thing on TV. I, I remember bringing it up like a weeks later and they're just like, oh, yeah, that was weird. I'm like, what? Yeah. No one's like curious. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, yeah, the, baby hand for instead, baby dream. It happens. Like, okay. <laughs> well, someone in the chat uh, said that they uh, don't believe that, that it was a ghost baby. And, uh, Larry, I'm going to tell you, I'm inclined to agree with them. I think yeah. this is a clear case of a criminal baby breaking into your house to steal, to eat your fruit roll ups. Possible. Um, you would be surprised. <laughs> It happens a criminal mind, especially especially a child criminal's mind, because a child's brain yes. learns things at an at an exceptionally fast rate. Uh, when when they apply that uh, accelerated learning towards criminality, they can get some pretty ingenious things done. So clearly, this was a criminal baby. I hope you follow the police report, and this baby faces justice. <laughs> you know, I I, I think I will, because uh, I do remember people uh, getting angry about missing food in the house. <laughs> accusing yeah. others so this you is gotta, a very uh yeah it's, 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 it's rid, cadence to it. you, you got to get rid of your little debbies of your fruit gushers your fruit roll-ups um what about any, your gogurts yeah your gogurts any of your uh frozen fruit that the, they like frozen fruit take all those things out of your house especially colored cereals yes yes oh, they're like my those. pig basically no more captain crunch or lucky charms yeah. in the house we, we got to keep these criminal babies Before away from pebbles you. can can i can i keep my chocolate milk though well, I My wouldn't do that. Chunky sons. milk is a big one. It's a big no-no. Uh, it's up there with Dino Nuggies. You can't uh, have any of that. It's over. And the Dino, you knew about those. How'd you know about those? <laughs> You're like, I didn't sign up for this. You son of a gun. So anybody got any questions before we bail? Before we get out of here? Let's see if anybody has anything they want to talk about. Yeah. I mean, this laid out, and we still got 420 people in the chat. We didn't break 500. Oh though. wow. We didn't break 500, but we usually do Fridays That's because I think we start later. We may have to start starting earlier because I think people yeah. are still they're tired because of their day. And yeah. then they're like, I got to go to bed. It's like midnight or whatever. And you're like, really? Because we thought, you know, yeah. we go later, but we get more people in the chat on Sundays. That you know? is kind of weird, isn't it? 
But see if anybody has anything to say. Ozzy Sue says, great show, Josh, Larry, Anthony. It was nice to see Tony show up for a little bit. I didn't think he would. Mm. Everybody's just saying great show. Well, I guess we have a great show. Nobody's got any questions. Like, yeah, your, a good your situation with that dog man like, do you feel like you've you've felt it like multiple times since then or did you just like yeah you know i've i felt it in other properties i've been to there was another time kind of recently i think i told you about this where i was uh i went hunting i brought um my friend she brought her girlfriend and uh she had a paranormal encounter it was weird it's like a weird how it can't it's not like coyote but Sound like a fake coyote. It's kind of weird, but those are sound like coyotes. So they were freaking out, but I did kind of feel like a, a slight pressure. I didn't feel really strong, so I wasn't too concerned. But I was kind of I had my head on a swivel. It was like a weird part of Georgia where it's like all pines and like tall grass, where we were camping. Yeah. And there's been other times as well where, uh, and my friend, like I said, she had some paranormal stuff happen to her on um, that trip, and that was only like a month or two ago. She heard like uh, knocking underneath the ground. You know, she was we were sleeping in tents. And she said, I couldn't sleep. I kept hearing knocking underneath the ground. And she was the only person, you know, to say that. But uh, yeah, and there's other times too. I've been out. Um, that's actually kind of hard for me to go hunting. I first got into it a couple of years ago because you got walking at, at night in the morning. I would just have like kind of like anxiety, and I would just have to calm myself down, just meditate, and just work on my breathing techniques. And just say, you're going to do this, man. You want to do this? You know, you're moving forward. And I just put up the key, you know, just put up my wall and just do it. But um, yeah, that time backpacking, I felt it. So else's this property, I felt it. I wanted to ask him, but I was like, eh, I'm going to sound crazy. So I just you know, I let it slide. I was like, hey, anything weird happen? Or yeah, you know, the big coyotes, you know? And uh, I was like, no, no, no. He's like, my neighbor say he saw the world's biggest coyote one time. That's about it. Corey and Cole's got a question for you. Yeah, shoot, let's hear it. He says, uh, ask him if he thinks that the light was protecting them. The light. Mm. That's a good question. I don't know. I, it didn't feel like anything. Like, I usually, you know, I usually feel like I have a good sense. Like, I feel like I, I get... I can sense things, intentions, and what things are rather than seeing things. But from that, it was weird. That was kind of part of the mystery, too, because I didn't really feel anything. I didn't feel malicious intent. I didn't feel the Holy... I didn't feel a good intent. You know, I didn't feel anything. It was just there, like an anomaly, like a glitch in the code or something. It was just so bizarre. I Honestly, man, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. I, couldn't, I, can't honest, on, I cannot honestly answer that question. I need to do a show like about that, Larry, because I have people who've told me stories like some people really? who are camping up near, of course, here we go again, the, the same place pops up because I've talked about it and it's people near Flagstaff, but they said that they went outside and it was daylight and it was like three in the morning. Really? And then they went back in and they were confused because they thought they'd slept till 3 p.m. and they were like, what? Yeah. They go back outside of their trailer, of their, their RV, and it was dark again like that, boom, boom. We could do a whole show about that. There was a lady that went ca- camping. She went out near, uh, God, what is that? What they, what, Anthony, you know this one, the, the Belgian lady, uh, Petra. Oh, yeah. And, and she had that weird experience with the light, the colors of the sky. I need to tell that story. And my voice is going out, so I don't know. <clears throat> but, uh, folks, yeah, that's all the time great. we have for tonight. Larry, you've been a great guest, and you've done a good job, and you told the stories and encounters of what, you, what happened to you. I know you're Thank a little you. nervous, a little trepidation, but you did a good job. And I know that it's not easy. Thank you, no, and it's, thank you to everyone that donated. Definitely not. definitely not. If you guys listening out there, it is a whole another ball game from being a listener to going on. You got so many things going through your head and just, yeah, it's wild. But I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you being the man that you are, Josh. And, you know, your nephews to help out. You guys rock. And, uh, you know, I, it's the reason why for years I haven't kept my mouth shut, but for you guys, I was like, yeah, come on. I'm going to want to, you know, contribute and, uh, you know, man up and do it. So I appreciate you guys for giving a platform. Well, I'm glad you did. I mean, we, you know, that's what we do every Friday. We bring a guest on, 
you know, we have guests that come on on Thursdays. We're going to have somebody coming on next Thursday. This coming Tuesday, we don't know what we're going to do yet because I don't know if I'm going to be able to do one because of my voice and because i got to talk again on Sunday. Yeah. But I was on the phone all day today because we had a bunch of theft happen at one of our sites. And so I was yeah. just – it was just it was ridiculous. Our I had so terrible. much going on. Uh, but the job – you know, duty calls. I don't know if we're going to have a show to do Sunday because I got a lot going on uh, Tuesday. Yeah. I mean, we'll be back Sunday. Hopefully, my voice will get better. Larry, thank you for for coming on and telling your stories, and I'm glad that we could make you feel comfortable. And and the, the audience is always yes, really good here. We don't have a lot of problems. You know, we get rid of the bad people. No, you guys are awesome. Um, I randomly pop in the chat sometimes just because I'm like, you know, I never had in the past. I was like, no, give it a shot. You know, you guys are always super welcoming. So. uh Appreciate that as well. It takes a village, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's great. You're doing something good here, man. Glad to hear you back at it and killing it. So, yeah. Yeah. We Sorry. had to slow it down a little bit because, and then we were going to stop for a while, but it was only so I could deal with these people in the situation and hopefully they'll yeah. leave us the hell alone. If they'll leave yeah. me alone, I'll leave them alone. But at, at this point, though, there's an investment there because these people have done a lot of things they shouldn't have done. And to a lot of right. people. And so I can't just turn my back on everybody that they've hurt. And I yeah. know that no apology is going to fix it. And then there's not going to be an apology forthcoming from them. No. So, you know, <clears throat> I have to protect yep. me and my people. And I, and I tell my people, this is who you should do, listen to, deal with, whatever, stay away from these yeah. other people. And the reason I say that is because I'm going to call out the people who aren't legit. Because yeah. I want my people to get the real, and I want this to be a good community. I'm not sure yeah. people are talking all this crazy about me wanting to be the king of this. I don't be the king of anything. I just want to be me no. and everybody else can be them and we can yeah. be left and the hell alone and we can get along and we can do what we do. Why does everybody want to be on top of something? You don't need to be the king it, of anything. And it's like, it's like, don't listen to words, judge them by their actions. I mean, you're the only, That's right. you, you promote people the most other channels on your channels, all constantly, constantly more than a, a paid sponsor ever would get. And it's like, you know, people question things or wonders like, don't listen to words. Words are vibrations in the air created by human beings. <laughs> just look at someone's actions. Yeah. Don't listen. Just look and then judge for yourself. And you it's, know, that's it's, how it's I really do ridiculous, it. Larry, because it's like if you look at like every week we have somebody on and we promote them. Yeah, like if exactly. I was a hater and I was I'm trying to be the most loudest person in the room or the biggest person or trying to be the king of anything or the emperor or whatever they say, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. not Jerry Jones or Jim Jones or the other Jones. What's his name? The other one. I'm not trying to be any of those Joneses. Okay, right. I'm only trying to be me. Those and other guys are. Should, yeah, I'm the I mean, king. I'm, I'm the just, king. I'm the number one. Uh, and all these different king voices. Of horror so. and the stuff. Yeah. 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 First name, yeah, greatest, Mr. last name ever. Like, what is, mm. I don't need all that. Yeah. So, old Swamp Man uh, tried to, you know, ripping me off some money uh, from a subscription. And I was like, like really? I'm like, okay. Mm. Well, you know, like, uh, yeah, that was wow. fun. So, not surprising. Yeah. No. I mean, it's yeah, not surprising. It, like, we talk about ego and everything and the way of and, you know, that's that factors into what people should look at with other people and see how they act and say, hmm, okay, this sounds childish for a reason, probably because it is and not very, <laughs> you know, spiritually or mentally developed enough. And that's okay, you know, not everyone's in certain spots, and that's okay. They just need more time to grow. But, you know, don't be telling everyone that you're the best, you're this, uh, yeah. you shouldn't have to. I mean, you, the, the loudest person in the room is usually the, the biggest BSer, you know? Yeah, so. that was one of the things that was said by that particular person. He said that the loudest person in the room is the weakest. And then he said, he's trying to say that I'm that. And then he was trying to say no. that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what did he say? Yeah. Anthony said that he's going to deal with me. I'm like, you're going so to deal with me, Obi-Wan? You're going to destroy so me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm really, yeah. I'm, I'm scared. I'm real scared. Right. Oh, no. Probably gonna right, send yeah. another demon to deal with. I'm gonna deal and deal with me. Okay. Yeah. 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 I got something for that too. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried He's about just... him or his words. Let him go. No. He said, "I'm still on this foolish." Ain't nobody on no foolish. Ain't nobody doing nothing to you, man. Just be yeah. in the swamp and be, you know, take keep playing with the alligators. Whatever. Keep eating pizza with the alligators. The alligators man. We don't so, need yeah. to worry about you. Yeah. Eat you Papa know? John's with the alligators. You know, do your thing. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I saw that. I was like, "What is that?" Yeah. That was what perfect. That? that was so weird. Like, 
Oh, yeah, no, I, didn't want to get I just into thought, that. I, did, I just typed in I said yeah, I just typed in that in DW and boom popped up oh. Instagram. You know, training. He said, it's "Come oh, for you, well, come watch to yourself, Texas." Because if he hears you, because they stalk my channel like like madmen. So if they hear you, they're gonna come. You know, they're gonna be. Don't yeah, get yourself true. involved, man. I don't want you getting involved and getting messed with. Don't nobody needs yeah, that kind yeah. of you know that smoke. Yeah, absolutely. I, he absolutely. says he can deal with me. I can deal with him. So. I can deal with a whole group of them. I don't give a crap. I don't need help. There's people like, oh, what can I do? I mean, you know, I had people that were, you know, on my team, and they didn't do anything. And they're just like, you yeah. know, the ones that could didn't, then the ones that did, you know, that did. I mean, like Barton stepped up. You know, he did. Blondes and Boo stepped up. BMR stepped up. Yeah. Uh, kind of disappointed in a couple of others. Bettina did what she could, but, I mean, they were all over her. And I'm not saying I'm the big hero, but I just don't give a crap. Like, you can throw everything, all your evil darts, throw it at me, and I don't give a crap. I'll chew them up and spit them back at you like a nail gun. I don't care. I said this before, and I'll say it again. I don't respect them. I have zero respect. They still have not shown me any reason to respect them. If they gave me a reason to respect them, I'd be like, hey, I respect them. I got none. I got nothing. Nothing but AI-generated stories, fake subs, fake views, whatever. No, I got no yeah. respect for them at all. Physically, mentally, spiritually, legally, financially, I have no respect for them at all. None of them. Yeah. So right, they, can, they can say what they yeah. want. Their shows are tanking. They're tanking. And that's good for the community that they're out of here. People say, oh, I want them to fail so I could be the big whatever, blah, 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 blah. There's a bunch of people that are my friends that I still cut for, and I want them to succeed. These other It's so people, dumb. It's so dumb because yeah, there's plenty to eat. There's plenty to eat. It don't. It doesn't yeah. matter. There's, it's like it's like what Joe Rogan talks about. He's like, he's like, I love it. He's like, it's plain to eat here. There's there's, there's no problems. You know, lift people why, up. Why is it that there's so many problems from those people, and then they, they everything they do, they turn around and say, you're doing it. You're doing it. Right. That, that's the oldest trick right. in the book. This is like right. psychology 101. Just blame the other guy for everything you're doing. Try to beat them to the punch so they they look like a big bad poopoo cock ahead. Whatever. I don't care. I don't, I don't right. care. Proof's in the pudding. The numbers are real. You exactly. got 450 people in a chat that lasted three hours. I mean, who cares? You know, right. they're going to exactly. say whatever they're going to say. They're going to do whatever they're going to do. Exactly. God bless them. God, hopefully God will touch their heart and they'll stop. That's all you can do. Yeah. Yeah. For me. We all grow eventually, you know. Yeah. You have eventually. no choice. You have no choice. Yeah, and, you, know. you know. And it's, it's your, your, your choice is not really, it's going to be made for you if you don't yeah. stop. You know, you got to just yeah. grow up. Yeah, it'll like, accept, it'll, you know, it'll come to a head. You know, it's they're not when you like start about foundations, man. You got a good foundation, you got a good team. We have good people around you. Even people listening now, they're all great. I've seen them all in the chat. I've been watching for four years. You know, it's like mm-hmm. it's a community. It's good, good foundation. So it doesn't matter. Like it's just they throw a bunch of random stuff out there. You know, I've seen them that you know I, I you know barely see it, and then. They'll switch something else next week and the next thing. And it's just like, this is dumb. It's going to be over <laughs> just, in a couple of months. Just and it's just like, they're going to lose. Yeah, exactly. Fumes in the tank, you know. We're, we're less so. than 40 people away from hitting 29,000. And those yeah, are real, that's subs, awesome. real numbers. Yeah. We get big numbers it, on the views, big numbers on the chat. They're jealous. And then when, and we, yeah. it cracks me up when he says that I'm a smaller channel. Like, really? <laughs> no, no. I, I, I beg to differ, my friend. I think that you have a lot of subs, and that's very cute. But right. what did uh, Leonidas say to Xerxes in the 300? He goes, you have a lot of slaves, Xerxes, but not many soldiers. Yeah. yeah. The right. truth. And, you know, and he's like, yeah. I see a lot of slaves. And we're you know, seeing I don't see spitting soldiers. Out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Corporal cutouts. But, you know, it's like, it's, it's so dumb. It's like, Come like if it just came together, man. So much stronger, and it was just mm-hmm. so much to eat. There's plenty to eat. There's plenty to eat. Everyone That's stronger. Right. Everyone's stronger together. And just I don't you know, understand straight, it. I don't understand straighten why up. They don't want to be. I, I think because they just want to be. They don't want. Uh, you know. You know. They want the. They got the marked cards. And they don't want. They want to see the marked deck. You know. I don't know. That's my theory. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, I'm not scared of any rap because I'm not really on social media. I post my adventures and my dives and my stuff like that on you, Instagram and Facebook. Thing. You go diving. You dive. Oh do yeah. You ever go? Do you ever find any like megalodon teeth, anything like that? Uh, oh yeah. I'm a I'm a huge ad addict for that. Huge addict. Um, yeah, that's why I go with the them. alligators. Yeah, I love them, man. I have a whole collection of uh, 
crazy stuff. I found a fossilized bottle one time too. Yeah, you told wild. me about that. That that story. I remember. I tell you what, we're gonna do this again. We'll probably have you come on and do the if you if you're up for it, we'll do the podcast so you can get your story yeah. out there. It's people from the different platforms can can listen because we have a lot of people on Spotify and yeah. Apple and all those different platforms. So we're gonna let you go, man. I gotta run. It's been great, dude. And yeah, thank absolutely. you for coming on. And, yeah, absolutely, uh, pleasure, pleasure, man. Yeah, man. Pleasure. You're a great guy, man. I really enjoyed having you on. We talked about a lot of things. Yeah, we did. We did, man. And appreciate everyone listening to my uh, ramblings. So I'm proud yeah, to hear you did a good four job. on your left. <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> to hear it. You guys are awesome. And uh, you guys in the chat are awesome as well. I mean, you guys are a great community, man. Well, everyone takes care. Have a good night. All right, Larry. I'll see you. See you guys. Bye. All right. Bye. So that was Larry. <clears throat> That's not his real name. That's what that's what he goes by. But uh, great guy, good good kid. I like him a lot. He's a good kid. And uh, he reached out to me, and he's like, you know, there's a bunch of people that have dogman encounters, and wanted to give me their stories. And we just started going through them, and and he gave me his his phone number. And uh, I want to send a shout out to Joe Allen too, who wrote me a letter. And uh, I haven't been able to call you back. And I wanted to tell you, I have not forgotten about you. Thank you for that letter. To sit there and take the time to write letters. Everybody who's wrote me letters, and there's not a lot of them. Most people just message me. But that's very, like, uh, touching, especially for her situation, to, to sit down and take the time to write me a letter. That was very nice. It was very nice of you. I keep all my letters, and, and I put them in a, in a folder. And uh, there have been a few people who wrote me letters, and I just it's it really it touches me because it takes a lot to 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 do that. I can't my my fingers have all been mangled, so I can't write real good. My writing is terrible. You can ask Anthony; he can't even read my writing at all. I can barely read it. Yeah. And so I just, but I love I love my fans, my listeners. I don't even like calling people fans. It sounds. It's too impersonal. Yeah, you're like, oh, these are my fans. You know, like, come on, that's not. There was somebody at my conference that that did something that kind of didn't like. They were just like, happens all the time. Like, come on, man. You know, I mean, be be a little more. Let's let's have some humility. All right. I mean, I I, I strut around sometimes. People say I do that. That's not me. I just like to, you know, just I can't help but when somebody really deserves something. Give them what they got coming, whether it's good or bad. But it's not my job to be the living embodiment of karma. We've all been there, and we've all had to be humbled. I told some stories tonight. I mean, I'm not, I'm not invincible. I've got my ass beat. <laughs> you know, it takes that though to learn how to do which, whatever it is you got. You got to you got to fail. The biggest problem with people too, and this is this is the theme for tonight. If you didn't notice when when uh, Larry came on tonight. If he wouldn't have come on, he it would have been you don't know until you try. Yeah, it's about failure. You fail, and you, you but you can't be afraid. You'll never know. You'll never reach that brass ring if you if you're afraid to fail. The biggest problem with me as a fighter, and I'll sit here and I'll admit this to you guys, is that I didn't take that leap. And part of it was because I I had I was a working guy, and there, like I said, there wasn't a lot of money in it. And if I would have gotten hurt. Well, my employers weren't going to be like, well, sorry, you got your leg or arm broke, you know, and fighting, that's your problem. Same reason I didn't go and play semi-pro football. I wasn't going to do that and then end up injuring myself. Um, I played a little bit, but I was like, I'm, uh, you know, I don't want to do this and get hurt. There's no money in it if, if you know, because if I, if I get hurt, I can't work. And so I had to weigh the balance, you know, do I want to be a fighter? And then again, I wanted to, you got to weigh the balance of, you know, what do, what do I want to do? I do want to get hit in the head a lot. No, I don't. It's not about being afraid. I wouldn't be able to sit here before you. God had other plans. But if I can't, I can't get hit in the head a bunch, I won't be able to sit here and talk to you. And I got some concussions. Um, I wasn't. I didn't get knocked out a bunch. I wasn't like one of those people where you get hit in the button and you're unconscious. I've never been knocked unconscious in a fight. Now, I've had my bell rung. Who hasn't if you're a fighter? Was I the greatest fighter ever? No. No. I'm a tough guy. I can take an ass beating. I can give one. But that's not what this is about. This is about, like, I never went that extra to really take it to another level. And um, I actually had a coach that kind of talked me out of it. He died of stomach cancer. I'll never forget. He bought me a trench coat. 
I never had a whole lot of nice things when I was young. I was basically kind of poor. I had a parent, parents that could have done a lot more for me. My mother, I think she held a grudge against me because she thought that I went with my dad. I went with my dad because I was afraid to tell him no. And I was afraid of what he might do. Or I, I didn't, he was a very unpredictable guy. I don't talk to him anymore, so I don't know what he's doing. I don't care. But he was very unpredictable, and I didn't know how he was going to react. And he could be aggressive. He was violent. He could be aggressive. And my stepmother was not a nice person. And she wouldn't let him help me. I think, I don't know 100%. This is me speculating on that. I don't think she would. She wanted him to help me most of the time. It was really her. Um, but I think he just wanted an excuse, too, for her to say, oh, don't do it. And he's like, okay. So I... I I lived like somebody was who was really poor when I had parents that were successful at the point where they were at. My mother, who's told Anthony before she died, she told him many times she regretted the way she was toward me. And I do believe she was sorry. My dad's never copped to it. And that's fine. Maybe one day before he passes or I pass or whichever one of us, he'll say something and say, hey, maybe I shouldn't have done this. He's tentatively said things, but, you know, I don't think I should have lived in my car. I don't think I should have been a homeless person at one time. I don't think I should have done, had to do what I did to, to struggle and fight and do all the things I did. I shouldn't have had to learn to be good at fighting. I shouldn't have had to have to do that. No, but that's not, you know, that's just the way life goes. And this, this guy comes on and he talks about his, his adventures and, and fighting and doing what he's done because he trains. And he's got a good job and he's done, he's done good for himself. And he, he had a couple encounters with Dogman and Ghosts. And uh, this show is so much more to me. The, the, than the, it's about the human condition and, and who we are as people. And when you can sit up here and tell somebody, hey, man, when I was in ninth grade, the same guy beat me up twice. <laughs> you know? Um, it's just the truth. I mean, you know, you got beat up, you got beat up. I mean, it's not, it's not something to be ashamed of. I mean, you know, I was, I was young, you know, it was a long time ago, you know, and I've had my bell rung a few times. I've been jumped at people like, you know, just really take it to me, but I'm still here and I'm still alive. I've been stabbed twice, once in the butt, <laughs> got stabbed in the butt cheek, um, by a scribe of all things, like a, like a tool. Somebody took it into the bar, stabbed me. And my wife said, you know what that was? I didn't even know what kind of tool it was. I described it to her, and she's like, oh, I know what that is. Um, funny. It was funny. You look back on it, you're kind of laughing about it. But, I mean, one of my friends, Sean, he was a fighter. He was an a, a MMA fighter, and he got hit in the head with a bottle and died right there on 6th Street by a female throwing a bottle, trying to hit a guy that she was mad at and hit him in the head in the temple. He survived all these fights, and then he died. Good friend of mine. I mean, you know, I lost friends. I lost people. And uh, But, you know, the thing is, like I said, you can't be afraid. You can't be afraid to fail. Part of me was, was you know, this image I had to uphold back in the day. And the other part of me was just I didn't have no, no money. So, you know, what are you going to do? You know, and you can't just walk into something and if you're not good at it, just walk back out. That's a coward's way out. But I made a decision about the age that, that Larry was, that he is now and a little younger than Anthony. And I said, I'm not going to fight anymore and I'm not going to pursue this because, and it wasn't because I wasn't good at it. And I could have just kept going and getting better and better. But uh, there wasn't enough money to say, hey, this is going to be a career, you know. It was very hard to get up to that upper echelon to get good and be able to make the money, you know. It's, it's, it's hard. It's, it was easier to get into professional baseball or football than it was to get into that because it wasn't, there weren't that many fighters in those ranks that were elite. You know, they, they were making a lot of money. And so I had to, to work. I was a working person. I asked my dad uh, and my godfather years ago, we went down to the valley, and I asked both of them if they could help sponsor me so that I could fight and for a living. I wanted to do it. It was in 2007, 
And I said, I wanted to, to fight, you know, and I wanted to get a trainer so that I could train. I believe it was 2006 or seven. And I wanted to, you know, get in really good shape and, and try and pursue a career. At that point, I tried to do it again. And uh, I couldn't get anybody to help me. Um, my dad kind of discouraged discouraged it. I, you know, and, and I'm glad now. Look back, and I was angry about it. You know, I said I wanted some help if I could do this to pursue that. Um, but I had to work. I had no way to. And so at that point, I made a decision. I said I'm going to start a company and, and start a business and do whatever. And uh, it was the best decision I made. You know, it wasn't in the plans. It wasn't in God's plans. It wasn't in the cards. And so that's where that went, you know. You know, I looked at it bitterly for years and, you know, probably for several years I was just bitter. I was like, you know, I could have done something with this and I I didn't because I didn't, wasn't able to just train, you know, and, and focus on it, you know. I just didn't have the, the, the help. I didn't have the means, you know. But if I did that, folks, I wouldn't be here today. More than likely I wouldn't be doing this. If things had worked out in some other arena, you know, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't be here. And I love being here. Thank you, Larry. He says, thank you for the awesome community and support. Yeah, and, and we are a community, and we do work together, and we do help each other. Um, my wife started a holistic medicine page. It's like that for people to help people that can do, you know, to do things. She's, I, don't, I can't take credit for it. She's the one that started the prayer group. I didn't start the fan page. That was Phil Stern, and we got Chris Chris, uh, or what's his name, uh, Curtis Turner in there. That's not my, he's not related to me, but they they run that page or whatever, and Chris Clough. Uh, very good guys, nice people. And I would have not, I wouldn't have met any of these people if I wasn't doing this. And uh, I started doing this, and I thought, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to stick with it up, down, good, bad, left, right, whatever happens. I'm going to sit up here in front of you, and let people pick me apart and let people attack me and say whatever they're going to say because you know what? They say I don't have a thick skin. You're crazy. You have no idea. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know me. You know, like the U.K. guy. He's saying all these funny things with the goofy picture. I mean, you think that's going to hurt my feelings? I'm, I'm laughing. Okay? Put a little crown on my head. Alex Jones, Jim Jones, Jerry Jones. Call me whatever Jones you want. I don't care. You're not going to hurt my feelings. What I'm not going to abide by is, is you attacking my family and my friends. You will be challenged for that. You can say whatever you want about me. I don't give a crap. He wears a lot of jewelry. Look at him. His nails are this and his eyebrows. And I don't give a crap what you say. You're just feeding me. Okay? I don't care. Folks, whatever it is in your life, don't be afraid to fail. Failure is a part of life, and it's a growth process. Failure breeds growth, just like in destruction. You see clearly. You'll never be more clear than when you're facing destruction. Destruction clears, you know, everything. People don't understand that. It's a, it's a wheel. Destruction is not a bad thing. It's not a good thing. It just is. can't be built up if you're not broken down and god does it all the time they say that he's smithing us right yeah call him a silversmith mm -hmm. taking out the impurities and making you whole you're burned you walk through the fire and you come out on the other side purified a lot of people believe that's what hell is but it's not eternal they say that in some of the gnostics is not eternal go look it up i mean but it's something that you have to go through and you experience it like an eternity. But sometimes if you look at time, like, like our guest tonight was talking about time, time can seem infinite. When I was a kid, I was going to go bowling. Mm -hmm. and, and it was your grandmother. She was going to take me bowling. And I sat there all day waiting for her to get off work. And I looked at the clock for five and a half hours. <laughs> and I'm, I'm still now one day, I'm still looking at that clock, eternity. It, was, it never ended. <laughs> So in an alternate timeline, I'm still looking at that clock waiting for four so I can go bowling. I'll never forget. 
So, you know, it's all, it's all relative. It's just, it depends on you. The Satori, all those things he's talking about tonight, we were talking about, we got into. Don't be afraid to fail. You know? Here in this community, I'm not going to laugh at you. You know? I promise you, I'm not going to laugh at people's failure. And also, too, you know, I laugh when my enemies attack me. And when they're suffering and going through their suffering, I'm not going to laugh at them. It's not for us to do. Let them learn the hard lessons. And when they're going through the suffering, it, it can feel good. It can feel vindication. But try not to, to relish in it too much because that's, I don't believe that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're not supposed to be happy for people that are going through the pain and suffering of learning. And some of these people, they got to learn, and they don't even know they got to learn. We got to pray for them. Now, what happens beyond that? That's up to them. It's not your your fault. It's not your problem. But if we, as a people, as a group, as a community, what I want right now more than anything is just to go on with my life and be left the hell alone. And if they've learned the lesson to leave me alone, and leave Anthony and Tony and Nelly and all of you guys alone, then we're good. If they haven't learned that, then then we just keep on. You keep punching me, I'm going to punch back. I don't care. I don't give a crap. You send your demons, I'm going to throw them back at you. They're going to come back to you. I'm not your punching bag, okay? You've been bullying people for so long, and you're just so used to kicking everyone's ass and running them over and bullying them and running them over. Well, it comes back to you. And one person in particular, he had no business getting in my business. You could have just stayed on the sidelines, and but no, you had to jump in feet first because you thought that you were going to get some kind of big payday out of it. Yep. You thought you were going to get some kind of views and whatever. Oh, oh you got views. He got, he got his – everybody looked at you, that's for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, was it worth it? I would say not. But I don't think he's a very wise person. I don't think he's as smart as he thinks he is. Because if he was, he'd stop. It's a losing effort. You're not going to win this. But some people are willing to be destroyed just so they could do a little bit of damage to you. My mother was like that. Just to hurt my dad a little bit, she was willing to cut real deep on me and even herself just to get a little bit of pain out of him, which I don't think in the end he even gave a crap. I don't think he's capable of it. He's not. When you grow up with that kind of person lording over you for 20 years, 30 years, whatever of your life, what do you think you're going to do to me that hasn't already been done? Think about it. When those people come to the realization that they failed, are they going to be willing to sit there and accept that they lost? Then they stop and go, why did I lose? Well, that guy's doing something bad. He has to be because I do things that are bad. Or maybe I was just doing what was supposed to be done and I was correct. And that's not something I'm trying to relish and think of like, oh, I'm so good. I'm not the good guy. I'm not a perfect person. But I'm not doing what you're doing. So you maybe should have not picked up that rock and thrown it at me when your house is made of glass and built on sand. And preaching the word of God, you can talk about the Bible all day long. What good does it do if you don't really practice what you preach? I don't sit up here and preach to you every day because that's not my job. That's between you and God. I'm going to tell you how I feel about it and what I believe. But at the end of the day, I can tell you but I can't beat you over the head with it. Some of the things that they were saying were so ridiculous that I I laughed. They were like, say that Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. I said, Lord Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I said it many times. They said, he doesn't pray for people publicly. When when has people seen him pray? First of all, I had, but I don't go around touting it and making a big deal out of it. Yeah, you're not supposed to make a show of your prayer. No. Your piety shouldn't be on display for everybody to see. So you can be like, look at me, look at me. You know who was really good at that? The Pharisees. The Pharisees were very good at picking apart every single thing that Christ did. Look at him. His disciples, they took wheat and they put it in their mouths on the the Sabbath. 
And I made a post about that one day, and people lost their minds. Read the New Testament. Let's read the New Testament, and just you tell me. It's not our job to judge people. It's not our job to talk about how pious you are. It's not your job. In fact, you should probably just shut up and do what you need to do. If you're the best storyteller that the world has ever seen, then tell stories. Do what you got to do. And leave me alone. You just leave me alone. That's all you had to do. Don't get involved in, in the line. You hitch your, your wagon to someone who is so corrupt and so evil. And then you got to defend that corrupt and that evil person because you don't want to be wrong. The best thing that you can ever do is come forward and admit that you're wrong. The truth sets you free. And you feel so much better about yourself. You have a chance. You have an opportunity. They can, they can all do that. They can say, look, I was wrong. I did wrong. You know, but that I, I, pro I guarantee you, I'm not going to promise it, but I guarantee you that I'm just not, no, not going to do it. They're not going to do it. They can't. You know? That's the only chance you have to even be remotely better than anybody else because you are actually doing that. They, they want to be better than everybody so bad. But there's a lot of people who can't do that. You could put yourself, if that's what you want, you want to exalt yourself, which is also wrong. But, I mean, if that's what you're looking for, then do you want to be better than, than the, the most of the world? Come, come clean and just be like, look, I made a mistake. I said some bad things. I did some bad things. I'm not going to do it anymore and don't do it anymore. Stop all the fake. Stop the name calling, all the other crap. We're all guilty of it. We're all, we're all guilty of it. It's been dirty. Nasty. A lot of things being said. You know? Everybody's guilty of it. Nobody's nobody's hands are clean in this war. And I don't care. There's one guy, he's like, oh, don't call it a war. And dude, we, it, I think people understand this is in Iraq, okay? We're not, we're not comparing it to Afghanistan, all right? This is an information war that went back and forth, and it raged across multiple channels, it affected various facets of our community. Very few people were untouched by this because of their allegiances and their friendships and whatever. And there's some people telling me, well, you did really good. You came out on top. That wasn't my goal to come out on top. My goal was to survive because I'm not going to let you destroy what we've built as a community. I'm not going to let you tee off on my friends. Bettina and Abe are my friends. And people have asked me, would you do it again? Hey, yeah, I would do it again. In a heartbeat, I'd do it for anyone in this chat. Great or small, no matter how big your channel is or how small you are, nobody deserves to be talked that way. The guy that came on my Facebook and said all those things, argued with 70, 80 people, whatever. Nobody told you to come to my Facebook and just say a bunch of crazy stuff, cussing and acting a fool for hours hours I do a show I go back and he's still doing it and all these people come forward and be like I had a problem with this guy I had a problem with this guy I'm glad you did something about it whatever I wouldn't set out to be no hero I wasn't like George on my horse to go slay the dragon or David with the slingshot and fighting Goliath none of those fantasies went through my mind some people were making tombstone memes and joking and I so I made a little parody whatever I didn't go I'm Wyatt Earp I'm here to stop these ma bad people. You know, the comparisons were there for anybody to see. Make Pick any analogy you want. Yeah, Love Cat, you're right. It was a spiritual war. And it's not over. These people aren't just going to go quietly into the night. I, I guarantee you they're not. They're just going to wait and cook up another scheme and come up with something else. But they're, they're going to be checked. There's people here now that weren't here before that are stepping up and saying, you know what, I'm not going to live in fear. I refuse to be afraid of you. Me, I'm going to be honest, I was never afraid of you. Did I want trouble with you back in the day? No. Do I want trouble with you now? Hell no, of course I don't. But I'm not afraid of you. And the, the things that come knocking on the door, the things that come to the window, the things that come through the wall, 
the goose, the ghost, the goose, the goose, the ghost and the goblins and whatever else you want to send, go ahead. You do what you think you need to do. And I will do what I know I need to do. Now you can send all that, but just remember, are you prepared for when it returns? That's the question you got to ask yourself because it's not going to stick around me. I can tell you that right now. We, as a community, have to do better. People like Larry need to be able to come forward and tell their stories and not feel any kind of fear or trepidation or feel like they have to be aligned in some war. There shouldn't even be a war. And I promise you, I didn't start this. I did not start this conflict, and I. but I tell you this right now, and I'm not going to say the cliche thing that I'm going to finish it, but if you start something with me, you're going to get it back. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of bad, bad element in this community. It doesn't have to be that way. People could literally just leave each other alone. We could all work together. When I see my friends doing good and their channels blowing up and they're growing, I feel something in me that makes me feel good for them. And I've had people tell me, well, you got money. You're rich. They don't know nothing about my wealth. They don't know anything about my, my whatever. No. I'm no more wealthier than the next guy. I'm just, I, I share. I help. Well, we are wealthy, just not just not the way they they're accusing us you're mm -hmm. not the way they not the way people perceive wealth you know what true wealth is is how much love is in your heart and how much of that do you give to other people yeah so we take care of each other we look after each other the paranormal roundtable group that's what it's for to help each other. If those people stop and they don't make any more whatever, then let's stop too. But the minute they start back up, be prepared because if you don't want to see it, I mean, then, then don't look at it because I'm not going to sit back passively and let them build their strength back up to launch more attacks at us. And I say us because they attacked my listeners. They went after my family. Now people say, well, they're not as, you're not as, they're as strong as you. You know, your family, your friends, whatever. Well, then that means that I need to take my shield and lift it up, right? And grab my spear or my sword or whatever and defend those that can't defend themselves. I'm going to do that 1,000 times out of 1,000. I'm not going to sit here and let these people do whatever the hell they want to do. It's not going to happen. I don't give a crap. You can threaten to kill me. You can threaten to put demons on me. You can threaten to do whatever they, you, you're free to do whatever you want. It's your free will. It's your soul. But it's not going to work. You're not going to stop me. You're not going to beat me. But if you want it to, if you want it to end, then you leave people alone. We'll leave you alone. Thank you, Ristol. I agree with that statement. True wealth is family and friends. That is what it is. What did Jimmy say? Jimmy says, I'm still getting prank calls from, oh, God. Yeah, I, it, it, these, these people that are doing what they do, unclean spirits moving through them to destroy us. You know, there's a lot of people who deserve a lot of credit in this field. And these clowns take it away from those people. They take what's not theirs, that they did not earn. That's my problem, the main problem. I'm not going to sit back and let them attack people that I care about, those that I love. It's not going to happen. So, folks, we'll see you on Sunday. Let's pray for one another, and let's hope that everything calms down, dies down, and we hope that we can get back on track. We think we're starting to feel a little bit of normalcy. These people, you know, it, it's only you never know. 
for me, for my part, you know, I'd like to just go on and not have to deal with it anymore. But I know that I got a target on me. And it's probably always going to be there. And that's fine. That's fine with me. What I don't want is for you guys or my family or my friends to be targeted. That's dirty pool. You want to tag me, attack me. Don't mess with people I care about. Okay, because then it's going to get real ugly for you. All right, folks. <clears throat> we'll see you on Sunday. What do we got? About 7.30? Yeah. We'll make it about 7.30. And uh, we're going to tell some stories. We've got some really creepy, freaky stuff to talk about. I will be hopefully making a show for Tuesday, and then we got one on Thursday, of course. We're going to have uh, – we, we, re we recorded with uh, a guy who's an Ojibwe. And his wife, and that should be really good. It's coming out. That's kind of a project I'm doing, and we we named it. We kind of nicknamed it something, um, but yeah. So we don't know if we're going to call it that. We don't know. We don't know what we're doing, but it's just it's kind of going along with the theme of interviewing Native Americans from the community because I want their perspective on it. I want to know what they think and what they feel. And a lot of times, even though we pay lip service to it, they're marginalized in their beliefs because it doesn't fit into our modern world the way we want it to fit because we don't understand it. So a lot of mocking goes on. But uh, remember something, they were here before we were. And I say they because even though I'm part Comanche, I don't sit here and wear a headdress and act like I'm, you know, because that's not for me to do. That's appropriation to me. You know, even though I have that in me, I don't go around showing a card. That's just not me. So, folks, we'll see you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for everybody that donated. We appreciate it. We, we, we definitely going to put it to good use. We're, we are, there is a board game that my wife has made. I'm not going to take credit for it. I'd love, I'd love to. She wants me to, but I, I can't because she did it. And um, we're going to try to get it marketed, and we're going to start a We're going to do a Kickstarter, I believe, to get it done. So if you're looking to donate or help out with that, that would be nice. And or invest if you want to invest because I feel like we're going to sell some of these and I think it's going to be cool it's going to be a cool game so folks thank you for tuning in everybody thank you for donating thank you to my wonderful guests who came on we had a great conversation talked about everything and uh, we'll see you on Sunday that's, that's the day after tomorrow right? and then next week I'm going to be on BMR on Saturday so you get Friday, Saturday and Sunday with me if my voice can hold out thank you folks and good night <laughs>